All right, YouTube, we are live. I see some texts coming in. Australia, friendliest people on the planet, as far as I, in my experience. Hello, Australia. Hello, Russ. I, uh, I appreciate you bearing with me here. My first time doing this. I like it already. Cookie, hello, Cookie. You're here despite great weather. You thought I meant European time, I, Eastern time, you got it. All right, hey, Amy, hey, everybody, I see Matthew, I see Andrew, a lot of friends already. All right, now I am capable of, hey, James, I'm capable of talking for hours, and, uh, and I will, I will, all right, I see Chandler, Arizona, Amsterdam, hello, Amsterdam. All right, so my friends, I'm gonna to try to stare at the camera occasionally, but I can't help but seeing all these nice people. Hello, Dale, good to see you. So I see Russ, I see Cookie, Amy, Matthew, Andrew, James, all of you, Pooba. Hello, Pooba John, Chandler, Arizona. I recognize, uh, I recognize these names. All right, so my friends, uh, I'm here today at your service. The goal here today is to uh, pick my brain, and I hope you do about all things guitar. I happen to have the guitar handy. I've taught for a lot of years and I have heard a lot of questions in my years. It's totally possible you will ask me a question I have not heard before. So hello, Washington State. Hello, London. Hello, Carlos. North Jasper. North Jasper asks, first question. All right, North Jasper. First question going out to North Jasper. He asks, is this a D18 guitar? Excellent question. Uh, from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, the Martin Guitar Company. This is a D16 guitar, um, a D18 uh, on steroids. Um, it has scalloped bracing on the inside. Cute tortoiseshell pickguard. Um, I believe the neck at the time this was made was called a low profile neck, um, something along those lines, 1990. First question, and I knew the answer. Okay, so uh, hello, uh, Buckeye, Arizona, Jonathan. Beautiful, hello, Frank. Uh, hello, Stephen from Washington State. Okay, so here is how I think we could proceed with these questions and stuff. If you would like to ask me a question, before you text the question, put a couple of question marks before the question and then write the question. That's how I'll know you are saying, asking a question of me uh, and not simply saying hello, which I also like as well. Hello, Stuart. Uh, before we get too deep into this, um, there will probably be ads that pop up uh, during our live stream. Some of you may see them, uh, maybe not all of you will see them, but um, I apologize for any ads that might interrupt the live stream, uh, but we're learning as we go, okay? We'll see what happens. The ads do pay the bills and, um, and that's just, that's life in 2023. Uh, for those of you who are not going to be able to stick around all afternoon, I get that, um, or evening or morning, whatever time it is where you are, this is being recorded. So uh, you will be able to uh, watch this in the future. So whatever you miss, don't worry, it'll be saved for all posterity, for better, for worse. Okay, uh, so I'm looking to see all these nice people. I see Frank from Mexico. Hello, Frank. Uh, uh, Terry, man, it's going well. Thanks, Terry. Uh, okay, so North Jasper, we're going to follow up with uh, a question from North Jasper. He's asking, and some of you can see this on the live text, how long did it take you to separate the thumb from the hand? How important is it to keep the thumb in front of the fingers? Excellent question. So North Jasper, he is talking about uh, finger picking. And I'm going to refer to the right hand. Those of you who are lefties who play like lefties, bear with me. When I say right hand, you know I'm, I mean the picking hand. So North Jasper is talking about uh, separating the thumb, uh, yeah, from from the other fingers. I'm going to address your first question, the second part of your question first. How important is it to keep the thumb in front of the fingers? Pretty important. Here's what I mean. Take a look. I'm going to finger pick for a minute, and then then I'll see how my thumb is out like this, parallel to the string, and my fingers are tucked up. My fingers are plucking into my palm. That's what he's talking about, as opposed to this. See this right here? 
Sometimes beginners have a tendency to hold their hand like this, which is a very natural position. See this natural line right here? Very natural position, but not good for finger picking because all my fingers are closing in on each other like that. See that? So the way I always heard it, pretend you have a pitcher of water somewhere. I have a watering can around here. Pretend you have a pitcher of water in your hand and you want to pour the pitcher of water. Now I'm exaggerating a little bit, but see what I did with my wrist? Turn it like that. Okay, now my thumb is out here, parallel to the strings. My fingers are going into the palm, like that. Uh, for an extreme example, if you ever see Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits fame, he really, man, you can really see his thumb is out like this and his fingers are way over here. To me, that's a pretty pronounced exaggeration of this, but doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that he's someone who comes to mind. Okay, now the second part of your question, North Jasper, I believe what you're talking about is this notion of the thumb very often keeping the beat. You know, this is part of Travis picking. For those of you who heard about Travis picking, the thumb is keeping a beat, usually alternating between strings. And your remaining fingers doing whatever, whatever it takes, whether it's a repetitive pattern or something where you're actually producing a melody, a uh, good old freight train. Right, where there's a melody going on here, it's not just a pattern. So the idea of separating, it takes a little practice. If you are a finger picker and you are just starting out, especially just starting out, to get these fingers, not the pinky so much, although don't let me stop you from using the pinky, but I, I don't. And uh, it's pretty common to, to not use the pinky for finger picking. Little local color here, across the street from the ambulance barn. Uh, so it takes a little while. The strategy, that's an important word, the strategy for separating your fingertips from the thumb, essentially all sorts of music coming out here with the thumb keeping the beat, is to do pattern picking first. Pattern picking is when you do the same pattern regardless of the chord, right? Pattern picking first, and then a tune like Freight Train. Um, uh, that's the first one that comes to mind. To do that later on uh, Mississippi John Hurt, um, his tunes, uh, you want to you wanna get used to using your fingers first in a pattern, a predictable pattern. Uh, I just did thumb, index, thumb, middle, and then move on to melodic stuff uh, with the remaining fingers, harder tunes, essentially. Um, so that's the short answer to your question. If you want a, a recommendation for a good book, I'm a big book guy. Finger Style Guitar by Ken Perlman. Finger Style Guitar, last name spelled P-E-R-L-M-A-N. Ken Perlman, you can get it in all the usual places you get books. He does a nice job of introducing pattern picking and then into bare fingers. Okay, um, so I hope that answers your question, North Jasper. All right, uh, hey, Karen from Los Angeles, or Karen currently in Los Angeles. Nice to hear from you, Karen. Um, okay, so hold on, I'm looking down, more questions. Bum, 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 bum. Stephen uh, asked a good question. What's the best, best method to improve my finger picking? Um, part of that is what I, we just talked about, you know, starting with something very uh, simple and repetitive, uh, pattern picking, and then moving into the harder stuff. Travis picking, Mississippi John Hurt is a good example. But what I would tell anybody pursuing finger picking, develop a light touch and a relaxed hand, okay? Um, it's hard to relax. It just is, you know? Uh, and it's easy for someone like me to say, hey, man, you got to relax your hand. My theory, and this, uh, this is not only regarding finger picking, but regarding anything, any physical skill in life, you're a human being you throw all your muscles at a task because that's what we've been doing since, you know, billions of years. Over time, you learn to use only the muscles you need. Um, and that just takes time to use, I'm going to say, you know, 10% of the muscles that you could be using. At first, you think I'm going to win. I'm going to win the guitar. And to win the guitar, I'm going to use 100% of my muscles from, you know, my neck on down to my fingertips. And over time you realize, wait a minute, how come all those great guitar players aren't sweating and aren't? So to improve your finger picking, long story short, keep your hand as relaxed as possible. You pick, I know it's a general thing, but put it this way, you won't improve until you relax your hand. 
Okay, so that's that's what's something to think about. <clears throat> oh, another finger picking advice: don't be like me. <clears throat> I, uh, I actually got that. No, the the first book I got was called uh, Acoustic Guitar by Arlen Roth. Great book, and he introduced finger picking. I'm sure it was like an E minor chord with a simple pattern like this. And I did it for about two minutes and thought, it doesn't really sound like anything. And then I didn't do any finger picking for about three or four years, a lot of years. And what I didn't realize was a beginner finger picker, that's that's what it sounds like at first. It doesn't even sound that good, right? It sounds like that. And you think this is horrible. Um, it takes time. If I could go back in time, I would tell myself, relax your hand, do it a thousand times, do it for a week, and you'd be surprised how natural it becomes. Okay. All right. More questions. Uh, hello, Kevin from Ontario. Johnny Midnight. I recognize that name. Uh, bu -bu Matthew says, is it important to always use the thumb on the low three strings and index middle and ring on the other strings? Excellent question, Matthew. Um, the short answer is yes. If you're a beginner finger picker, you know, thumb is in charge of the three bass strings, index, middle, and ring, each get their own personal string. And if you were taking lessons from me, like Matthew does, um, but you out there in YouTube land, the stuff that we do at first, I would insist that your thumb remains uh, dedicated to the three bass strings and no other ones, just those three. And then the index, middle, and ring stay on those on you know they each get their own personal string with no exceptions okay then very soon in the process we'd come across exceptions where all of a sudden the thumb might go all the way over to the uh third treble string the g string or the index finger might hop over to the fourth string so there's exceptions but in the beginning when you're finger picking you are you have to learn discipline. It's weird, right? It's like you, all of a sudden you have a bunch of guitar picks instead of having one guitar pick. You know, there's only so many things that can go wrong with one guitar pick. All of a sudden you've got all these little, these little things with minds of their own. Um, a lot can go wrong. So finger picking requires a certain amount of discipline. If you're going to do it right, if you want to take a tune, I'm going to use uh, Dust in the Wind. Here's an example. Guitar teacher's dream, man, Dust in the Wind. Oh. I still think it sounds great. I've been teaching this song for a million years. I think, ah, oh, it sounds great. Uh, if you aspire to, to play conventional finger picking, by conventional, I mean, you know, awesome <laughs> finger picking that will help you play famous tunes, discipline, thumb in charge of the three fat strings, index on the G string, middle on the B string, ring on the E string. Um, before I get to another question, quick thing. There are famous guitar players, influential guitar players, who don't follow this whatsoever. So uh, Reverend Gary Davis, absolutely one of the most famous and influential blues finger -picking guitar players, did everything with his thumb and his pointer. And there are thick books on how to play in the Reverend, Garris, Reverend Gary Davis style. Okay, so what, I'm, what I teach uh, in general and, and today, I'm teaching you the conventional, normal, whatever word you want to use, you know, how, how people play the guitar. You will find exceptions. Okay, you get the idea. All right. Uh, I'm going to say a few hellos. Uh, ba -ba -ba okay, a lot of good questions, a lot of good questions. Uh, lobster picking. <laughs> Charlie, you lost me. You're going to have to clarify that, Charlie. Rick, welcome. Uh, Hilly R3, okay. Stephen, I hope you check in. Happy, uh, hello from Connecticut to Maine, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, I'm going to be in Maine uh, in the summertime. Uh, I'm hoping to do like a meet and greet at a couple of music stores in southern Maine. So, so mark your calendar. And, and anybody else out there from Maine, uh, I love your state. <laughs> I, I, I'm there every summer. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to jump to a question. From Jim, learning to sing while playing. Absolutely the top, that's maybe the top two or maybe three questions, requests, you know, with my in-person students. Um, and I'm going to give you some strategies for playing and singing. Um, but uh, 
Playing and singing at the same time is a tricky one. <clears throat> it's tricky for me to talk about because I never, I never didn't play and sing at the same time. I got the guitar when I was 16 years old. Good old Guild Starfire, heavily modified. Whoever had it before me, some serious belt buckle wear. In fact, hey, you would make my dreams come true if someone out there knew who played a 1963 Guild Starfire, played the heck out of it, replaced a bunch of parts, and then brought it into a guitar store in Massachusetts for me to buy in 1980-something. <laughs> and uh, I would love to find who the original owner of that guitar was. Okay. Uh, playing and singing. From the day I got my first guitar, I was making up awesome songs. Grammy, Grammy quality songs with extremely limited guitar skills and singing at the same time. Blah, 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 blah. You know, so I never didn't play and sing at the same time. That is not helpful information to you guys. <laughs> um, but uh, here's what I've, here's what I suggest to all my students. To play and sing at the same time, you need to be really confident with one or the other. If you have very little experience on the guitar and very little experience singing, yeah, now your, your brain is, is multitasking to say the least. So, okay, now let's assume that you have very little experience doing either one. Here are some suggestions. <clears throat> and I can't promise you these will work, but this is the, over the years, these are the best answers I've come up with. You want to keep the guitar playing as simple as possible so that you can focus on the singing, right? Regardless of how Paul Simon, James Taylor, Pink Floyd, you name it, regardless of how they played the guitar in that particular song, you're going to have to dumb it down so you can sing at the same time. So, uh, okay, I, I refer to Knock in Heaven's Door by Bob Dylan quite a bit. I'm a big Bob Dylan fan. Um, and uh, it's a slow song with pretty simple chords. So, uh, or maybe we could do, um, oh yeah, let's do Knock on Heaven's Door. I'm going to do it uh, specifically in the key of D. I'm going to go D to A to E minor, D to A to G. I forget if that's the real key. Someone in the comments on uh, text, someone remind me if that's the actual key he recorded this song in. Um, but here's my point. I'm going to go like this. Knock, knock, knock on heaven's door. See it? Dumbing down doesn't get any dumber than just thumb strokes, right? Or with a pick. Okay? Because, hey, if I'm going to have any hope of playing and singing at the same time, I have to sacrifice something. So even if you're capable of playing knock on heaven's door with a fancier strum pattern, finger, whatever, that's great, awesome. If you, if you can't do that and sing at the same time, dumb it down. Or especially if it's the right hand. We can't change the chords, right? But you can change the right hand. And, and see if that helps. So strategy number one, strategy number one is become awesome at either the guitar or, you know, have your confidence be amazing confidence as a singer. Um, and that, that helps. Strategy number two, dumb down the picking hand. Okay? Um, that helps, you know. Another strategy <clears throat> don't worry so much about singing beautifully, like I just did. <laughs> um, uh, you don't even say the lyrics. You could just, you know, hum, mutter, you know, knock, knock it on heaven's door. You know, I call that sneaking in the back door. Tell your brain, uh, I, this is this is not really singing and playing. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna knock, knock. You know what I mean? And kind of just tell yourself, nah, that's no big deal. If you are very concerned about singing beautifully and um, memorizing the whole song, verse and chorus and all that kind of stuff, it could be just too much for your brain to process. Okay, so that's just another strategy I have. Um, and I'm sure I'll think of more as time goes on, because like I said, how do you play and sing is like my, the number two most common question, maybe number three. Okay, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Mark? Hey, Mark, how are you? Uh, Pete. <laughs> hey, Pete, uh, you know, some people have made a lot of money sounding like a bucket of rusty bolts. Don't never say never, man. Never say never. 
Uh, this old stoner, hey man, been watching videos for years. Hopefully my videos, I don't know. Uh, okay, um, love to sing with my guitar comments, most welcome. Yeah, um, here's another thing real quick. Uh, as one of my students said recently, singing brings me joy. So look, everybody, <laughs> you know, even if even if it means, you know, waiting till the house is empty, whatever. If, if you want to play and sing at the same time, you know, don't let anything stop you. I mean, it's, it'd just be a shame if, if that's where your heart is um, and someone's like, you know, just just do it. Just do it. Uh, okay. Um, hey, thanks, Charlie. Charlie reminded me, Charlie Beagle, that Knock on Heaven's Door, the proper key, as Bob Dylan recorded, uh, G, D, A minor, G, D, C. Okay. Yeah, I had a feeling I was... <laughs> I, I, uh, that's why I asked. Thanks, Charlie. So I have a video out there somewhere on YouTube on how to play Knock Me Heaven's Door. So I defer to that video. Kevin, Dust in the Wind is a nice finger picking piece. It is for lots of reasons, including it sounds harder than it is. Um, and right, don't we all want that, you know? Uh, cool Breeze, Joe from San Francisco. Excellent. Um, newfound Man, thanks for confirming. And G, Horse with No Name, a good one to play and sing for beginner. Yeah, yeah. Um, Stand by me for singing and playing. Yep. Pete, hey, from Australia, Pete. Okay. Uh, bum, bum, bum. I'm going to jump over to, to uh, Dale. Dale, you're asking a good question. Method to learn bar chords. We could spend the rest of this live stream talking about <clears throat> bar chords. And, um, and I, I don't want to <laughs> because I can't wait to see what other questions. But, yeah, let's talk about bar chords. Real quick, bar chords are probably the biggest hang-up. I've come across since I started teaching in 1992. Um, I've had, for example, I've had youngish kids, say 11 years old, says my dad says I have to learn bar chords. Um, I've had adult students who say, God, I suck. I, I can't play bar chords. I suck. So I have my own strategies for getting people not hung up on bar chords. So if you and I, out there, if you and I were doing in-person lessons um, or, or Zoom lessons and Skype lessons, like I do with a few of you, uh, I would do two things. I would help you with bar chords, which I'm going to do in a second. And secondly, I would give you a million other ways to judge your progress on the guitar <laughs> that, that have nothing to do with bar chords. Because the number one thing I want to avoid is for anyone to get hung up on one skill and say, I'm frustrated, I'm bad at this thing. In fact, I don't know if I even want to continue with this thing um, because I can't do this one particular skill. You know, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't fall for it. You know, even if your dad is telling you, hey, man, can you play bar chords? How come the teacher doesn't show you bar chords? Okay, enough about that. Now let's talk about getting good at bar chords. Okay, again, I'm going to refer to the left hand, even though I know some of you are. Lefties, all right. I'm going to refer to the left hand here. Okay. Uh, the trick to bar chords that I have found to be very successful, even if it takes a little practice. And right now, for the record, I'm barring at five, and my fingers are in what I call the E major shape. Real quick, imagine doing an E major chord. I bet you all know E major. But instead of using those three fingers, I'm going to use those three fingers. Okay, it's still an E major chord. My index is freed up. And then I'm going to glide up. So I now have a bar at five and what used to be an E major chord. Okay, so I call that a bar chord with the E major shape. Okay. Ready for the trick? All right. Two things are going to happen simultaneously. My left elbow is going to come in towards the guitar and my left index is going to roll over onto the side of the finger. Okay, I'm going to do it slowly. This is not a natural thing. You're going to, you're going to think it's kind of weird. It helps, keep to, it helps to keep your hand loose, okay? Keep your left hand loose and relaxed. You can't do this if your left hand is all stressed out. In fact, don't even press hard on the strings. Just let your fingertips rest on the strings for a minute, okay? Don't, don't squeeze. Okay, left elbow in towards the guitar. Index finger rolling over onto the edge of the finger. Which edge? The edge closest to your thumb. If I did squeeze, I don't know if this will come through with my uh, my fantastic high def uh, uh, webcam. But I'm squeezing just to prove a point. The little lines on it, you can see that the little lines are on the edge of my finger. 
not the center. Do not use the center of your finger to play a bar chord. I know it, our instinct would be to use the center of the finger. Don't do it. Roll it over. Every once in a while, I have someone who says, roll over this way. <laughs> look, look what my elbow did. If your elbow is doing that, that, you're rolling your finger the wrong way, okay? Plus, have you ever, you know, does that look normal? <laughs> right? Okay. So, left hand, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, left elbow in towards the guitar with, with a loose hand, a nice loose hand. Roll over onto the edge of that index finger. Okay. So, now you have what I call a fighting chance. Your bar chord could still sound like... Right? But but now you have a fighting chance of getting it right. Okay? So left elbow in, roll over onto the edge of that index finger. This goes for any bar chord, majors, minor, any any bar you've ever heard. In fact, any I would give you the same advice, and I will give you the same advice, if there's a question about how do you get good at F? Okay, check it out. An F chord, same, this is like the four string F. Same thing. See my index finger here, barring the two skinny strings? Roll it over onto that edge, the edge closest to your thumb. Do not use the center squishy part of your finger. It'll never, it'll never work. Or, or if you can make it work, good for you, but you're, you're going against the, the current, against the tide, so to speak. So same thing. We're covering two subjects, bar chords and this, this version of F. Um, roll at left elbow in, index finger rolls over. Here's the thing. The movement I'm making here is so subtle, right? So you got to take my word for it. Instead of using the center squishy part of my index, I'm using the edge, okay? All right, so that's my number one piece of advice for getting good at bar chords. Um, left elbow in, edge of your finger. If you're working on a bar chord song, well, a, a song that has like one bar chord that shows up, I'm going to do like a D to F sharp minor, say to G, and then to A, right? Well, that's a second topic because check out check out my neck, shoulder, arm. Here's my D chord, life is good, right? When I go to play F sharp minor, watch how much changes here. Watch, I commit, I commit so much of my body to this new thing. See that? I mean, I'm not exaggerating. This is this is what you do. So when you when you're playing a song that has like one bar chord that just shows up, be prepared to to really commit to it. It's not just a cute little thing where one finger goes like, doo, 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 doo. you know, it's like okay, here comes I'm on the D, here comes my F sharp minor, and then G, and then A. Okay, so that's my advice in a context where there's one bar chord that suddenly shows up. I use um. Bob Dylan again. I use Lay Lady Lay as a teaching tool for a song that, at least for the verse, is nothing but bar chords. In which case, it, that doesn't make it easy, but at least you're constantly in this position. And somewhere out there, I hope I have a Lay Lady Lay, Lay Lady Lay video. Okay. Anybody see any ads pop up yet? I have not seen any ads pop up yet, but hopefully, uh, if they do, I appreciate your patience. Um, hey, before I forget everybody, um, first of all, thank you for being here. This is so fun. Um, I'm a little caffeinated. So I'm extra excited to see you all. Uh, I would love to do this more often. It turns out Saturday afternoon here is a good time for me. It's uh, 5.30 here in Connecticut. Um, so this time works for me and uh, obviously it works for you guys. And so uh, thanks for being here and, and let's do this again, okay? All right. Uh, Di Juan, um, thanks. You're you're very welcome, Di Juan. Nice. Uh, um, many vibes said lean the elbow into it. Sure. Yep. Um, okay. What else do we have here? Ba -ba -bum. Beginner guitar. Hey, beginner guitar. I will see you. Beginner guitar. I'll see you on Tuesday. Right. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Uh, okay. I want to make sure I don't miss any. Oh. Um, <laughs> Some of you who have done these kind of live streams before, you're familiar with something called a super chat. A super chat. Super chat is when you actually pay me to answer a question. <laughs> so if any of you are so inclined and you know how to do a super chat, I think it's at the bottom of your screen. There's a dollar sign. Uh, you figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. And, and I, I thank you in advance. If you, um, if you have a question, and you want to get my attention and you want to make sure I answer your question, Super Chat is the way to do it. And I uh, thanks in advance for doing that. Okay. 
Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Jody. I appreciate that. Um, in a land of a thousand lakes, Minnesota. Excellent. Love Minnesota. Um, okay, James, I see your question. Give me a second here. Um, Chris, you're suggesting uh, My Guitar Gently Weeps for bar chords. Excellent. Love it. Can't go wrong with the Beatles. In fact, you could, you could have a whole guitar program of, you know, how to play the guitar and just start with easy Beatles songs and medium Beatles songs and more difficult Beatles songs. Um, and, and you could you could become a, a terrific guitar player with nothing but a diet of Beatles songs. You have to choose wisely. You know, you have to choose wisely. And by the way, this is not because the Beatles um, were not always talented guitar players. It's just that, you know, some of their songwriting involves relatively rudimentary skills. Um, and some of it involves trickier skills. Uh, oh, I have a video in the works. You guys are going to be the first to hear about this. Um, and this video I have, I think I'm going to call it something like um, boot camp, uh, boot camp, you know, colon, uh, Beatles riffs. And the idea, and feel free to tell me what you think of this in the, uh, in the comments. <clears throat> the idea is uh, boot camp, meaning you just do it. No one cares what you, you know, your comments are or like, oh, my pinky doesn't want to do that. No, this is boot camp, you know, and this particular boot camp theme is Beatles songs, but very specifically bass riffs, Paul McCartney's bass riffs to like eight or 10 Beatles songs. And the idea is uh, you sit there for a practice session. Let's say you sit down for 45 minutes. So you got 45 minutes to play the guitar and you're going to walk in the footsteps of Paul McCartney's bass playing on you know, eight or 10 Beatles tunes. You can do it on six string guitar, that's fine. And the idea is you're gonna focus on like a catchy little riff of, from say Birthday by the Beatles, a song Birthday. And you're gonna work on playing it exactly how Paul McCartney would have played on the bass, but you follow everything to the letter. Meaning if the music says middle finger, if it says do it with an up pickup, whatever it says, you gotta do it. You gotta do it exactly right, you know? Um, these are gonna be short little, catchy little bass parts um, with everything spelled out, you know, which finger you use, down up picking, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and you sit there and it's a very, I think it's a very healthy, um, a very healthy way to spend a practice session because you focus very specifically on exactly which finger you use exactly. These are things that are gonna be relatively easy to memorize because they may not be two measures long. And so I, if it goes well, if I like the final product, I think I might start a series of these called the, um, boot camp series with different themes. And, uh, and it's a chance to, you know, uh, print out the PDF and sit and say, okay, I'm going to work at this stuff and become a, a better guitar player because you're using your pinky when you're supposed to, because you're doing down up picking exactly like it says. So that's, um, anyway, see what you think about that. I think I like the idea. Um, no excuses, you know, boot camp, you do what it says. Okay, oh, there's some super chats are coming in. Holy cow, super chats, uh, super chats. Um, Beatles boot camp, oh yeah, thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> some love, hey, John, I appreciate that. Mr. Beginner Guitar, okay. So, 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 um, I don't wanna miss any questions here. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum, ba -ba -bum. Okay, okay, Andrew's asking a good question. When I have my capo, when I have a capo on my guitar and is buzzing on multiple frets, he says, should I adjust the truss rod? Um, so let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, capos. Capos are beautiful things. Putting on a capo on your guitar, putting on correctly, nice and firmly. I hope you all have a capo. It's the most beautiful of all the technology <laughs> you can spend money on as a guitar player. Nothing, nothing is worth more than a capo. Now, I, I'm coming at this from a very specific uh, point of view. We'll get to the buzzing in a second. Uh, capos help you change the key of a song. And for those of you who are about as good a singer as I am, you can benefit from putting a song into a key where it fits your range um, and uh, with a $20 device, you know, just a beautiful thing. Secondarily, if you want to play a specific song and you're working on getting it to sound exactly like the recording, you need a capo. Uh, 
here comes a sun just doesn't sound right unless you put the capo at seven, you know? Okay, so getting back to Andrew's question, putting on the capo shouldn't, that by itself, that shouldn't cause any buzzing unless in some way you put it on either kind of, you know, cockeyed, you know, not parallel to the frets or maybe too far away from the fret. Um, if repositioning the capo does not get rid of the buzzing, in fact, if you're getting the buzzing even without the capo, um, then it's time to address some things. Now, I, I know I have a lot of, exp how do I want to put this? I know a lot about guitar repair without having done very much myself. So I know about lots of things that can go wrong. And I bring my guitar to my buddy to make it right again. <laughs> and when he tells me stuff, I listen, you know. Um, so reasons why you couldn't get some buzzing. I'll tell you right now, you know, some of you aren't going to like this. Some of you are getting buzzing on your guitar because you just got your guitar recently and your fingers just aren't strong enough. Or put it this way, you, you are, your fingers are strong enough. I take that back. If you're a real beginner, beginner, like we all were. And by the way, if you're a real beginner, beginner, and you're here joining us here, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm here for you. Um, sometimes a beginner will say, oh, my gosh, I'm getting this buzzing sound, you know? Well, it's a combination of not pressing down hard enough consistently. Maybe you press down hard enough on Wednesday, but then Thursday, oh, you know, you got to be consistent, you know? And of course, getting as close to the fret as possible, right? That goes a long way. Okay. So number one, I know Andrew, this doesn't apply to you, but I got to bring it up. Um, you're, it's, it's extremely likely you get some ugly buzzing sound in the first few weeks and months of playing the guitar. It just, and it'll go away. It'll go away as your, as your fingers limber up. It's not a matter of pure muscle. A little bit of it is muscle if you're a, a total beginner, but it has to do with other stuff too, you know, like getting as close to the fret as possible. And so like that. Okay. Um, reasons why a guitar could buzz. Um, the neck is either bowing in the wrong direction. Okay, check it out. Here's the neck of the guitar. It appears to be straight, right? A guitar should bow a little bit in this direction, a little bit. Almost, you almost can't perceive it with the naked eye, you know, a little bit. If the guitar neck was perfectly, truly straight, the strings would almost certainly be buzzing against the neck. So you do want the, the guitar to bow a little bit in this direction. Many years ago, back when there were 13 colonies, uh, there was no truss rod in the back of the neck. There was none, you know. And for many years, I, the Martin Company, Martin Guitars specifically, didn't put a truss rod. And even when everyone else was doing it, Martin's like, no, no, we just have magic necks. Um, but the number one way to get the guitar to bow the right amount, um, and certainly the number one way to correct it if the guitar happens to bow in this direction, because that's anything's possible. Anything's possible. Don't forget, this, this is... Uh, you know, a hunk of a tree that has some moisture in it, it, you know, it's a tree, you know, trees do stuff. So the truss rod, on some guitars, you access the truss rod up here, my finger is, other guitars, you access the truss rod up here. Guess what this piece, this white piece is called? Truss rod cover, yeah. Um, on this guitar, uh, a replica of a 1952 guitar, which is a great, awesome guitar. I love this Fender, Fender Telecaster. To access the truss rod, you have to take off the pick guard and, and get up in there. Not cool, but that's how they did in 1952. So if you're a genius who buys a 1952 replica, you can't complain that it's authentic. Okay, so truss rods, truss rod adjusted. I don't recommend that you do it yourself. Um, because I don't want to get, you know, anyone to yell at me. Can you do it yourself? Yeah, yeah, you can do it yourself. You know, find a find a guitar repair person, a luthier, <clears throat> have them do it. Ideally, they can show you what they're doing. In fact, a luthier might be so busy. The guys I know are so busy with repairs. They would, they might even show you what they're doing. Um, and they might even encourage you to do it yourself or at least show you how to not mess it up if you do it yourself. Anyways, um, Number two reason why you might get some buzzing on the strings. No, we're on number three, right? Number one is you're just a new a new player and your fingers aren't used to stuff yet. Number two, the the neck is bowing either that way or that way, or or it's just no, no, it's bowing either this way or it's perfectly straight. You know, we do want it to bow a little bit 
in this direction, not too much. Number three reason why you might get some buzzing, frets. Frets, these, these uh, silver bits of fret wire that have been carefully hammered in to the slots that were cut, you know, and then the sides were trimmed with fret nippers and they were filed so you don't cut your hand when you go like this. It should feel nice and smooth. You shouldn't feel the ends of those frets poking out. Okay. Um, it's possible that the way I understand it, <clears throat> over time, the frets could begin to essentially pop out of their slots a little bit, you know, and they need to be <clears throat> banged back in, filed, smoothed out, sanded, whatever the, the method is, you know. Um, things change over time. So lots of reasons why your guitar might bust. Okay, let's move on. Um, okay, who do we got here? I see some super chats coming in. Trust, uh, audiophile man, hi, audiophile man. Trust rod adjustment is easy to do if you're handy. Oh yeah, yeah, it is, it is. I just, I don't want to get myself in trouble and tell people like, hey man, just, you know, you'll figure it out, you know. Um, the trust rod is a beautiful, amazing device, um, but things can go wrong. Among other things that can go wrong is the trust rod has been maxed out it's, it's, it can't go any more in one direction. And someone says, I'm gonna make it move. And if a truss rod gets broken within the neck, does that sound like a, a positive outcome? <laughs> you know, um, dealing with that could be more expensive than the actual guitar itself. So I'm gonna stay away, stay away from that. But yeah, Audio Found Man is saying there's videos on how to adjust, yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna defer to those guys and let them take the heat for it. Having said that, I know that some of you live in areas where there's not a guitar repair person down the block. In my case, um, my buddy is uh, just a few miles from where I live, you know, and he's, he's so great. I realize I'm super lucky. Um, not all of you can be that lucky. I get it. I get it. Um, but they're worth their weight in gold, you know. Um, so I, I will always, always, always defer to that professional um, before I tell you, ah, you can do that yourself, you know. I mean, for repairs like this or adjustments like this. Okay. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. The comments are coming in, everybody. Um, uh, hey, Craig from St. Louis. <clears throat> hey, Dwayne. Uh, I appreciate your support. Um, oh, uh, real quick, speaking of support, I'm, uh, I created a Patreon, Patreon page. And um, you can head over there whenever the time is right. Uh, the to find me on patreon it's called song bike guitar lessons okay song bike guitar lessons and uh and you can um you can support me that way i appreciate it and you can see these different levels and stuff i i'm new to patreon um so i'll probably be fine-tuning the, the the perks and the benefits as time goes on but anyways that's in case you're so inclined uh you can head on over to patreon okay uh, bum, 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 bum. uh Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Smith, GNR Smith. Um, excellent, man. You're playing excellent. You're out there playing. Good to hear. Oh, so maybe some of you saw an ad. Okay. If some of you saw an ad, uh, I got you. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Andrew and Mark. And uh, and I'm, was it an interesting ad? <laughs> I'm curious if if during the ad, did you miss any of my, you know, pearls of wisdom or did it sort of pick back up as if the ad hadn't happened? I'm kind of curious about that. Um, hopefully it was a dynamite ad that, you know, enriched your life, you know. Uh, da -da 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 -dum. Okay. Uh, hey, Kevin. Uh, hey, our skies today. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Tim. Tim Hendrickson, when bending two strings, the same fret, on adjacent strings, is it done with the same finger fretting both strings, or better with two fingers fretting? Um, I. It's a great question. I'm going to illustrate that for a second. Make sure we're talking about the same thing. Uh, I. It just so happens I'm going to be focusing on the second and third strings, meaning the B and G strings at the seventh fret. My ring finger is certainly touching the first string. That's fine. But I'm not gonna. I'm gonna do my best to not pluck the third string. By the way, you can do this with your thumb and pointer too. Don't don't get hung up on the the pin head. So I'm currently bending my second third strings at the seventh fret, and I think in general it's more common to do it with one one finger. I'm using my ring finger. 
because these two fingers can just lay down. Same thing, I'm touching three strings, three strings, and they can help with the bend. A little bit easier on electric than on acoustic, but I'm not gonna make any excuses. So I, I, I hope that um, answers your question. Uh, usually I, I'll do it with um, one, one finger and then all the fingers supporting. Um, so hope that answers your question. Real quick, there's also the kind of a bend where you bend the second string, but you don't bend the first string. Now, I know this was not exactly what you're talking about, but my pinky is on 12 on the first string. My ring finger is on 12 on the second string. My index and middle are also touching the second string. So I have three fingers all on the second string, uh, 12, 11, 10. It's on the B string, the second string. My pinky on the first string. My pinky is not going to bend, but I'm going to pluck both strings. That's the train whistle. So in that case, I am using two separate fingers. One is stable, let's call it stable, and the other note is being bent. I know that, uh, I don't think that was your exact question, but I figured I'd, I'd throw that out there. Okay, uh, boom, 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 boom. Okay, okay. James and Andrew and everybody, I see your, <laughs> thanks, Dan. Hey, Dan, hey, Dan, uh, I can't quite figure out where you live. <laughs> you, you're overseas, right? You're a long way from, from uh, Connecticut. I think you are, you know. Um, okay. A Hertz commercial. Oh, it gave the skip option. All right. Excellent. The, when I started looking into this whole live stream business, uh, YouTube said some of your viewers will be able to skip over the ads and some might not even see the ads. So if the, there are those amongst you who did not see a Hertz car rental ad. All right. You know, you must be doing something, something right. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I really appreciate the super chats, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for those coming in. Um, uh, James, I see your question. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to look ahead to some other people too. Um, same thing, North Jasper, I see your question. Oh, here's a crucial question. Um, and I'm glad you asked, Charlie. Why is it called Song Bike? Why is my channel called Song Bike? Um, uh, I love songs. I love bikes. I want to have a name that wasn't like Guitar Lesson Man, you know? Um, <laughs> I just, you know, getting creative. <clears throat> But here's the significance on bikes, bicycles. I had a motorcycle briefly, loved it, survived it. Uh, I don't have a motorcycle right now, but I, as a kid, I was on my bicycle constantly. Loved, loved being on a bicycle. The song part, and this is relevant. Um, it's not just that, oh, I, I like songs, because who doesn't like songs, right? A little bit of my philosophy, where I'm coming from, and this is how I always was as a, as a up and coming guitar player, as a, as a young guitar player. Um, my motivation was to learn songs all the way through, um, to be able to to be able to start a song and play all the way through, um, and uh, make a complete statement, so to speak, right? Um, which put put me in the world of rhythm guitar, right? Rhythm guitar. Who 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 plays the song all the way through? Who's the foundation? It's the rhythm guitar player, you know. And so, now this might sound obvious to some of you people, like, well, of course you want to play the song all the way through. No. Um, I came to realize there are talented, awesome people out there who wanted to spend months learning Eruption by Eddie Van Halen. Awesome. Fan. I mean, I can't do that. And I never, I never put in the time to learn Eruption, you know. That's not a bad goal. You know, we're, the guitar is yours to do with as you please. But for me, the, the whole point was to get up and play a song all the way through. Even if all I was doing was hitting the G, C, and D with my own rudimentary strumming. Hey, there's a song. I could write a song. I could play a song. Um, and then as years went by, I realized... Okay, I better learn some other skills <laughs> besides just banging out, you know, G, C, and D or some bar chords or whatever. But I was always song oriented. And I, ever since I've been catching up on all the cool stuff, finger tapping and, you know, bending and lead guitar stuff. So that's kind of where I've been coming from since day one. Um, okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Dan from Tokyo. Okay, that answers my question. Hope to visit someday. Uh, yeah, I got to get out more. Okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. 
Uh, uh, North Jasper, you're asking a good question, so I am going to follow up on this. He's asking, um, playing standing up versus sitting down. Uh, obviously, sit, playing sitting down is more comfortable, right? And if you're like most of us, you're going to spend most of your practice time sitting down. Nothing wrong with that. Um, although, get up and stretch once in a while. I'm not joking. You know, you're going to, if you're, you know, if you're over like 18, your back needs some some care and attention. So even if you're planning on sitting down and playing for an hour, get up and stretch. The I'll get to standing in a second. I have students who will sit on a, their favorite sofa and they'll end up like this and, and, and you know, you, you got to have some, you know, got to keep it classy, right? <laughs> um, so I encourage you to have a decent chair, to have decent posture. Um, you know, the guitar asks your body to do some weird things. So we all practice sitting down, but, but be smart about it. If you got some aches and pains, um, ask yourself if you're doing something to give you aches and pains that can be remedied by simply sitting in a different chair, sitting up straight, whatever it takes. In terms of playing standing up, uh, this is why I like this question so much. Um, when you s stand up and play after days and weeks and months of sitting down, you're going to lose about <laughs> six months of the skills you've learned temporarily. You're going to stand up and you're going to say, oh, my God, I can't do anything. Um, and it's weird because uh, you, your, your body, everything, all those little subtle things you've been working on for the, your weeks and months of playing the guitar, everything is slightly askew. If you aspire to stand up and play um, with a church group, with your buddies in a garage band, whatever the context might be, you have to spend a, a portion of your practice time practicing standing up exactly how you would strap everything, you know, get a mirror, pretend you're a rock star, do it. You cannot go from sitting down, practicing, practicing, practicing to, uh, to then go to your gig, you know, the, the gig you've been working for for six months and you, you can't do it. You can't do it. You'll, it'll be a shock and you'll think, ah, that's right. That, that YouTube guy, he said, you got to practice standing up. So, so yeah. So, um, standing up is a whole different game. If, if you do not foresee yourself being in that situation, yeah, play sitting down. That's totally fine. Um, although I still recommend getting up and stretching and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Uh, Kevin's making an interesting point. Adjusting the truss rod would be the last thing to alter if there is buzz. Um, you know, if you can 100% guarantee it's not your fingers doing the right thing, um, uh, I'm not going to argue with you. It's just that if there's a buzz that's making you crazy and it's not obviously coming from what you're doing with your fingers, um, you know, bring it to a pro. You know, you know, and, you know, long-term solution: become a guitar repair person. The world needs more of them. I've never met a guitar repair person, luthier. I've never met one that is not swamped with business. Uh, so if, if you're looking for a career or a second career, you know, let me, let me encourage you. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. Paul, you're asking an interesting question. Um, should strings above the sound hole be a perfect curve? My strings look choppy. I don't know. I don't know. Ask, ask me that question again. Be, be a little more specific, because um, I, I'm curious. You know, um, you you might be, you might be talking about uh, the very subtle radius of a neck. You know. For most of our guitars, the fretboard is not perfectly flat across. It's a very subtle radius. Um, and your strings will certainly reflect that radius. The exception would be a, a old school, not old school, but a nylon string classical guitar, which to my knowledge has an extremely, if not a perfectly flat fretboard, a lot more flat than every other kind of guitar. Um, okay. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, the lap steel, you notice the lap steel. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, there's not enough hours in the day, man. That's all I can tell you. 
what's more beautiful than a, than a beautifully played lap steel or pedal steel guitar? I, I can, I can play it, you know, I can fake it, you know, I can fake it, I can, you know, I can play a cool little solo in a Johnny Cash tune and then I'm out, you know, um, but it's, it's on my list, you know, when I retire, when I retire, I'm going to get really good at the guitar. <laughs> I'm just going to play guitar all day. Um, uh, okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, hey, North Country Fisher, uh, greetings from the UK. Nice to hear you. Um, uh, Steve, he says, my music shop is a trust rod for free. That's great. Is it, is it because you bought the guitar there? Cause that would be super cool if you, you know, that's why you support a local business because you say, Hey, I got this guitar. Can you guys tweak this for me? And they do it that I, I would love for that to be the reality. Um, but, if, but if you have a place that, that does tweaks like that, that's awesome. And if it's free, that's even better. Uh, okay. Da -da 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 -da. Um, Hey, Susan, I appreciate that. Uh, lap steel lessons would be very cool. Yeah. Think about lap steel, and, and many of you know this. Uh, on the guitar, there are frets, right? You know, on the lap steel, like that one behind me, those are white painted lines, you know? Um, the, in fact, the whole fretboard that you can see back there, uh, over there, um, it's a sticker, it's a decal. Yeah, I know, high tech, right? It's a decal that got stuck on there, but it does the job. So, whereas you and I, we intend to play the third fret. Someone says, play the third fret, and you squeeze the skinny string right behind the third fret, and you don't think about it, right? On lap steels and pedal steels, you have that cute little steel bar, like this, for example. You know, it's one, one type. And you rest it on top of the strings, and you have to use your ear and get it right above the fret because if you're a little bit in one direction or the other, it sounds pretty raw, you know? That's why, it's why violin is so rough, <clears throat> because violin doesn't have frets. You have to essentially train your ear um, to, to, to grab the right note or, or put the slide in the right place. And if it's not right, fix it really fast or do a little vibrato like, you know, like I do, <laughs> where you, you know, you uh, the average, <laughs> you find the average uh, pitch. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. <clears throat> okay. 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 Uh, -da 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 um, hey, thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. Um, many vibes. Any tips on creating vibrato with the body of the guitar rather than the fretting hand? Vibrato with the body of the guitar rather than the fretting hand. So um, many vibes. You're, are you talking about you keep your hand steady and then you, I, I know you're probably not talking about that weird neck bend thing that people can do. Like they, they grab something and they, they bend the neck and every, every luthier in the world is like, oh, don't do that. Um, the, it's an interesting question. I, I don't know. I don't know. Using the body to bend. Maybe you're talking about, you know, it's kind of pressing it. Um, I probably, would re recognize what you're talking about if I saw someone do it. But when I when I go to do vibrato, I'm kind of nice and boring. I Well, no, since you brought up vibrato, let me tell you something real quick. I found myself doing vibrato a certain way. I'm going to do nine on the G string, nine on the third string. And I thought, wow, why? Why am I doing vibrato like this? My hand was, my hand is not making any contact with the guitar except my middle, the tip of my middle finger. And I'm pulling it down towards the floor, you know, and, and letting it come back to natural position. And I realized, I watched many, many years ago, I watched an Eric Clapton live thing so often. And I'm, I, I'm definitely not a student of Eric Clapton, but I realized I, I'm pretty sure that's, that's what I saw him doing. And by osmosis, I kind of, and I'm not saying, any of you Eric Clapton uh, students, don't yell at me. <laughs> I, all I know is I found myself doing this, and I thought, you know, this is more than one way to do vibrato. And I thought, oh my gosh, I think I'm, I think that's, I must have picked that up from watching that video. I don't know. Okay, that's that's my, that's my, uh, my little vibrato thing for the day. Okay. Um, hey, if uh, I so appreciate these beautiful super chats coming in. If any of these super chats are um, are coming along with a specific question, um, 
I, I'm going to try to get to it. Okay. Uh, Greg says, thanks for your tips and tricks. I, I appreciate you, Greg. Thank you so much. By the way, uh, it looks like we have, oh, um, in 15 seconds, ads will run shortly for some viewers. So thanks for your patience. Okay. Uh, we currently have 82 viewers in our community here. Awesome, man. 82 people. Holy cow. I, I have never spoken with 82 guitar people at one time. So awesome. One more thing says vibrato has always been difficult for me. Um, yeah. Doing it on electric guitar is huge. Um, it's not fair to ask your fingers to do it on acoustic guitar. It just doesn't. I'm not saying you cannot do it, but if you, if it's a challenge for your own acoustic guitar, that's part of the reason why it's a challenge, you know. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I'm looking for more questions. Don't forget, if you have a question for me personally, um, put a couple question marks first, so so I I can I can address it. You know. Um, okay. North Jasper, do you teach finger brushing? Top of nail of the of the pointer finger. Um, I. I don't teach that, but I'm, I don't oppose it. If you're talking about the kind of playing, um, you know, I'm grabbing a G chord here. <clears throat> I think you're talking about that kind of motion. Nothing wrong with that. The, it gets a certain sound. It certainly has a certain look, right? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about it in a second. I'll talk more about why I don't teach that in a second. Just so you know what I was just doing there, I got my G chord. I was doing the fat sixth string. And then I was with my index finger, I was brushing down, using my fingernail, but the, then coming back up really down two or three strings with my uh, with the fleshy part of my finger. By the way, over the years I've learned that something I just play quickly without thinking about it is usually <laughs> results in something saying, stop, what's that thing you just did? I think, I, I don't know what I just did. So I try to be uh, cognizant of that. So you could, um, in fact, this is almost like an intro to finger picking, sort of, but I, again, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a second. If you want to spice things up, you know, hit the sixth string with a little fingernail down and back up but then maybe alternate with a fourth string and the same down up six, four, six. Four. Okay, so why don't I teach people to do that? It sounds nice, right? I do teach people to do that, except I, the equivalent with a pick. Okay, but more specifically why I, I don't teach that as finger picking. It's not real finger picking. Um, it's a little bit rudimentary. I mean, I, I just showed you, and I'm happy to show you. It doesn't mean you're not a good guitar player. It's just that there's, I've always, you know, the, as I was a young guitar player, I started when I was 16, 18. I worked in a uh, terrific music store outside Chicago, and those guys were, were real finger pickers. They certainly were way more advanced than I was. I didn't know anything about finger picking. And, and that's not what they did. You know, that's for better or worse, I think that's like the Peter, Paul, and Mary folky kind of thing. Although I'm sure they could do more than that, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Um, the guys who I watched as I was learning, they did relatively intricate stuff, if not very intricate stuff, using all their bare fingers, the, like the dust in the wind example I gave. So I had no, I didn't see anyone doing this. I didn't, even though I had the, the sound of it could not compare with the cool stuff I saw the people around me doing. So I, and I hope that doesn't sound snobby. Um, it does sound snobby, but <laughs> um, it, it, when you see books and books and lessons on how to do all this finger picking stuff, it's not that, it's not that. Having said that, totally, if, if this works for you, thumb and one finger, of course it sounds great. Do it, do it. Um, here's an example of why someone like me should just not give my commentary. Let's say someone's a great singer, just a great singer. And they're doing this on the guitar. Awesome. Who 
that you're you're not there to to analyze the guitar playing. The great singer who's connecting with beautiful material, passionate performance. I wish I was that person, <laughs> you know. So so I hope you know what I'm saying here. Nothing wrong with this whatsoever. Um, but don't let that be the end of your finger picking career, right? If you can do that, you're capable of fancier stuff too. Okay, I think you get the idea. Um, okay. Oh, interesting. North Jasper, Jason Isbell, he, he does that kind of thing. Okay, see? Uh, Jason Isbell used to be in the drive-by truckers, right? Drive-by truckers. Um, and then uh, they, I think they continue their separate ways. And uh, so if Jason Isbell does that, yeah. Now is a good time for me to say anything you can imagine. There's someone famous who does that thing, whether it's because they're missing a finger or it's simply that's how they were taught or that's how they think you're supposed to do it or they were too lazy. I don't mean to say lazy, but they just they did something that worked for them. and They never learned another way of it. Classic example is G, right? All of us learn G this way. Those three fingers, right? And the pinky just hanging out. Maybe at some point we realize it's a four-finger G. Oh, you can put those two fingers down there. Okay, and you're fine. And people do this exclusively, you know, this G or that for their entire lives. Don't give it a second thought. Someone like me comes along. Well, actually, a guy in the music shop where I worked at, he saw me doing G this way. He's like, yeah, that's good. you got to learn G this way too. Now, well, he was, he was a grown-up. He was like 23. So I thought, all right, <laughs> I better do what he says. You know, he's a guitar teacher. Well, some of you have seen my videos, you know, I'm kind of obsessed with this G chord. Middle, ring, and pinky. Same note, same everything. It's just those three fingers instead of those three fingers. Well, there's a lot of practical reasons to do G this way. I don't get into all those reasons right now. But you will see talented, smart, famous people who are strumming a G chord. And then they go to a C chord. And you'll see their entire arm and shoulder and everything go like this. And they go back to G. And it's because that works for them. They've done it. They have no reason to change that. You know, they could have Grammy Awards and that's how they do G. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but but it's there's it's not logical. It's just it's how they got used to it. What's to me what's logical is having as many options as possible, including learning G this way as one of the tools in your tool bag. Okay. How did I get on this uh how did I get on this um topic? Uh, North Jasper, you talked about Jason Isbell. Yeah. Um, a cool part about pursuing guitar is you become you watch people you watch your friends neighbors famous people <laughs> jokers like me you know and you get a better and better eye for stuff um two things are true you pick up stuff i mean i picked up that eric clapton vibrato or at least in my mind it's an eric clapton vibrato thing you pick up little things oh that's how that person does it okay um and that's cool. You, as time goes on, you learn to look for certain things. I'll give you an example in a second of a, something that happened to me. <clears throat> Secondly, and let me be very, <laughs> I, wanna, I want you to take this to heart. Just like a magician doing sleight of hand stuff, there are subtle things that, that your ear hears and your eyes can't pick up. So don't beat yourself up. If, if you hear this music, you're like, how, how did he do that? His, his hands are barely moving. The hands potentially are moving faster than your eyes can perceive it. And that's just reality. It just, it just is. So sometimes that's the case. Okay, quick story. I was living in, in the Chicago area and I went to a gig. I think it was a club called Shubas. Anybody uh, watching from the Chicago area know Shubas? Hopefully they're still well. And a terrific guy was playing at Shubas who was alive and well and out there. I think he He's on tour, yeah, because he's coming through Connecticut. Uh, Chris Smither. Chris Smither, among other things, wrote a song that Bonnie Raitt covered called Love You Like a Man. Um, but Chris Smither, check him out. Great fingerstock guitar player. Okay. I've been working, working, working on a Chris Smither tune. And there's one part of the song that I couldn't figure out. Great finger picker, by the way. What I, what I could figure out, it, it seemed like he must have been fretting, you know, the six string at three and the, the pinky at like eight or something crazy, you know? And surely that was not what he was doing, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I had to stop there. You know, I could play a bunch of the, the song, but I couldn't play that part. Okay. Well, he comes through Chicago. I go to Shubas to see Chris Smither and uh, he does that tune. I'm like, whoa, he's playing my song. And I know, I know, okay, 
halfway through the verse, here it comes like, so how does he do that chord? Yeah, <laughs> he did it, <laughs> you know, his hands could do it. So on the plus side, I nailed it. I knew exactly what he had to be doing. I just couldn't physically do it. Anyways, as you make progress as a guitar player, you'll have moments like that. You have things, the rest of your family will be enjoying music and you'll be like, oh, he's Jason Isbell is brushing his finger or whatever, <laughs> you know? While the rest of the world is enjoying music like a regular human being, you will be like, well, what kind of amp is he using? You know, it's all right. I, I understand. Um, Tim used to go to Shoeways. Yeah. Hopefully it's still there, right? Uh, North Jasper, John Prine. Yeah. 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 Clearly the wrong people died uh, during COVID, right? The wrong people. Um, uh, John, John Prine, ma'am. Hmm. Um, hey, Jeff, I appreciate uh, that comment. Lessons are so fun, says Jeff. Thanks for the tricks. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Four finger, uh, Kevin says, four finger G chord <clears throat> makes it easier to change the D. Definitely, definitely. Listen, four finger G chord just sounds cool. Um, I call it the four finger G. Some people I've heard call it the um, bluegrass G because it, it shows up in a lot of bluegrass playing because it that's the kind of chiming, chiming kind of sound you get. Um, I've heard some people call it the Beatles G because it shows up in some Beatles songs. But I figure four finger G leaves nothing to the imagination. Once someone gave me a hard time online because I called this the fat string and the skinny string. You know, I go for obvious names, folks. You know, when someone says the fat string, there's no doubt about what they're talking, talking about. I know, <laughs> I know it's the E string. I know, you know, I know it's the sixth string. I get it. Um, I I want to use language that that leaves nothing to the imagination. You know, um, I have a reputation for being a patient person, and I, I'll take it. I'll take it. I am a patient person, but a lot of my teaching style is based on wanting to say something once. Man, fat string, the fat string. Don't make me repeat it. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say the E string and have people be like, well, which one? I'll play the six string. Well. Which was the sixth string? So I'm patient, but if I can find a way to say something once and 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 move on, I do try to try to do that. Okay. Uh, um, hey, Kevin, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate that. Um, one more thing. Sorry to ask about vibrato. Some of you don't hear vibrato going with it. In. Yeah. Um, one more thing. You're asking a good question about vibrato. He's asking. I think. Do you do vibrato this way? You know. Wiggle your finger back and forth this way or up and down this way. Um, it's a, no, it's a great question. I, I'm not a vibrato expert. So I always do vibrato, pulling it down towards the floor with the exception of the skinny string, which, or even the, even the two treble strings. I mean, especially the first skinny E string, because if you pull it down, right, it goes off the fingerboard, you get no success. But right everything else i pulled down towards the floor i believe what you are describing when when the vibrato goes back and forth this way is known as violin vibrato because it's how violinists do it i think um i am gonna plead ignorance again i'm not a vibrato expert um there are people out there who who are and you're not even starting to talk about the bb king vibrato where he he has a butterfly shape in his in his hand and gets a great BB King sound. It's on my list of things to do to uh, become a vibrato expert. I won't I won't waste your time though and and BS and be like, well, there's only one. You don't you don't need that. Um, I'll defer to uh, I'll defer to other experts out there who've really studied vibrato. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, bum, bum, bum. Mm, Stephen, uh, taking your three finger banjo skills and transferring them to uh, to the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Real quick. As you make progress on the guitar, one thing that without a doubt is happening that directly relates to your progress is your fretting hand skills, right? Your left hand skills. Well, all those skills can be applied to really any instrument, any fretted instrument, um, you know, banjo, ukulele, mandolin, you know, you name it. <clears throat> so we have a huge head start, us guitar players, on playing any fretted instrument with um 
with uh, you know, with that, these new skills or these, these developing skills with the left hand. If we were all smart, we'd all just become bass players and actually make some money because, <laughs> you know, the, the world needs bass players. And um, I've never met a bass player who didn't play in two or three or four bands um, and, uh, and make some decent money doing so. Um, so anyways, uh, if, if uh, Stephen, if you, it sounds like you did, I don't know if you did banjo first and then then the guitar, or if you simply pick up the banjo and then those skills, you went back to your guitar and did those skills. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mark Knopfler, what an interesting approach. Real quick, I I play with a pick and when it's appropriate, I play with my bare fingers and I teach both styles, right? When I think about my favorite guitar players, especially electric guitar players, a bunch of them don't use a pick. Mark Knopfler, uh, Hubert Sumlin, any Hubert Sumlin fans out there? Hubert Sumlin uh, played with Howlin' Wolf. I love Hubert Sumlin, didn't use a pick. So yes, as I lie awake at night, I think to myself, if a bunch of these guys, man, you know, they never used picks, even when they're rocking out playing some serious, you know, electric guitar, why do I use a pick? I don't know, this is, this is, uh, you know, although obviously um, there's so much, there's so many sounds that you can really only achieve with a pick. That's my excuse. Uh, Steven, you did the banjo first, very cool. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm scrolling back up. Um, okay. And again, let me take a breath right here, you guys. First of all, thank you for being here. Let's do this again. All right. Um, you're asking great questions and, um, and I'm, I'm, uh, I appreciate it. This is fun. Okay. Um, oh, uh, my YouTube channel. I'm so close to 200,000 subscribers. Now, many of you are subscribers already, and thank you. I appreciate that. If some of you are not subscribers, YouTube, well, you're here right now, right? You know, uh, I appreciate uh, if you subscribe to my channel, if only just because 200,000 is such a nice number. Like, oh, they don't send a new play button for 200,000. I don't, you know, um, but uh, if they're going to dangle that number in front of me, I want that number, you know. So I appreciate those of you who can subscribe now who have not already subscribed. Okay. Uh, yeah, Robert A. Rob, grab your question. Robert A. says, "The bane of my guitar ability for years is my my fretting fingers touch where it should be open strings, and I haven't the flexibility to come straight down on the strings." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry that it's been bugging you for years, <clears throat> because in a perfect world, it bugs you for a couple of months, and then um, so. There's the um, number one. Yes, it, it does. It's a pain, right? You go to play a chord. I'm going to do a C chord, but you know my my index finger is lightly touching this first skinny E string. You're like ah, it makes you crazy, right? Um, I, I've never met a student who didn't feel that their fingers were either too big or too small to play the guitar. Everyone, no matter what you're pursuing. It's extremely likely, as as a beginner, beginner, that you're gonna that thought is gonna cross your mind. My fingers are too big. I should never have endeavored, you know, embarked in this endeavor. Or my fingers are too small. Um, stick with it. You'll get over that. Having said this, um, uh, Robert, um, without you know, it, it it's possible that you have massive hands. It's possible, you know, that that you have a bigger challenge than the rest of us. Um, so I'm going to give you I'm going to give you some general tips, you know, um, and some of these are going to be painfully obvious. But, you know, fingernails as short as possible, 100 percent short as possible. Right. Without getting painful, but as short as possible. Um, make sure your guitar is well adjusted. Right. Nice, well adjusted, mentally <laughs> sane guitar. If your fingers are I'm sorry, if your strings are high, if the action is high, if they're hard to press down, which would mean the neck is bowing too much in this direction, you know, well, then you may be doing some crazy overcompensating that that could lead you to touch other strings. That's always possible. I use light gauge strings, by the way, which I wish they would just call them normal gauge. You know, light sounds like light, right? Like Bud Light or something. Something's not, not enough, you know. Um, uh, light gauge meaning uh, 12 thousandths of an inch to 52 thousands of niches. I just use Diodero. Diodero is such a cool company. I have a little music shop and I've done business with Diodero as a, as a, you know, retailer. 
They're just a cool company. And uh, I like their strings, but I also like them as a company. They're, they're happy to do business with me, even though I buy so little product from them. Um, anyways, so if you're getting, if your fingers are touching things you don't want them to touch, <clears throat> short nails, make sure your guitar is as easy to play as possible. Uh, give yourself credit. This is more of a psychological thing. Give yourself credit for what you can do. Um, and I'll give you a quick example. Say someone's like, I'm just gonna use C as, or I'm gonna use D as, an, as another example. It's extremely common. People go to play a D chord and their ring finger deadens out the skinny string, right? We love chords, you gotta learn your chords. Let's put chords aside for a minute. Let's say you're not having much success with chords. There's so much stuff you can play has nothing to do with chords, like what they call cowboy chords, okay? Um, here's what I mean by that. M my job, I always figured, was to, to help people have success on, on their instrument. And there's so many ways to have success. By the way, this is not, <laughs> this was not my attitude on day one. My attitude on day one is like, I'm a guitar student, what do I teach them, you know? But over the years, I realized you know, I, I want everyone to have some success in some form. Um, and if we can find out what gives you that sense of success and satisfaction, we can build on that, right? Um, so, and I realize this is not directly covering what you're talking about in terms of, um, you know, beautiful sound of chords, but I can't emphasize it enough. There's so many beautiful things you can do on an instrument um, while you're still pursuing chords. Okay, and, and getting chords that consistently sound great. So just then, you know, a typical blues shuffle pattern. Or, you know, improvising lead guitar. I have so much fun with my students when I'm in the background strumming A minor and then going nuts with an A minor pentatonic scale. So satisfying. You know, you can get backing tracks on YouTube, you know, and play along with backing tracks. So, um, I, again, I, you're asking a very specific question and I want to answer that, but I also want to show you this, this options, man, this options. Um, anything is better than not playing the guitar, right? You know, so, um, so I hope some of those things help, right? Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, Charlie, I appreciate that. I, Charlie says <laughs> he has the best quality. He doesn't take himself too seriously. Like, wait, I don't. <laughs> no. Um, so since you mentioned it, I, uh, I went to a college reunion and I had this classmate who I knew just a little bit, we we're in the same major. And I said, how are you doing? How are you doing? And we're chatting. And she said, yeah, you know, she said, I, uh, I, I, I like you. I, I, I remember this about you. I, I like you and I like you because you didn't take yourself too seriously. I'm like, so, <laughs> but yeah, um, I, it's true. It's true. I take music seriously and I take your progress. I don't want to sound too, sentimental, but I take your progress seriously as, as people who are pursuing this crazy thing here. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We live in a crazy world. We're all doing the best we can. Um, the music shop I used to work at, my boss had a framed picture with a little, a little illustration of a, of a guy kind of looked like the Monopoly man, a little illustration of the Monopoly guy, right? He's had a little cigarette and a top hat and a tuxedo and he's strutting down the down the, down the block and above it, it just said, don't take yourself too seriously, you know? So working the shop for 10 years, looking at that sign. Yeah. You know, you know, we're all doing the best we can. Don't take yourself too seriously. Okay. Um, Robert A, alternative bar chords. Okay. Uh, hey, Rakesh from Georgia. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, okay. Our skies today. I appreciate that. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Two million. I, uh, Bikram, Bikram, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Oh, so books, Bikram, since you opened this uh, subject, um, you can see behind me over there and behind me over there. I've written a bunch of books. I took a little break from YouTube videos um, and put my efforts into writing books. One is available as a hard copy book that you can buy directly from me, which I appreciate. Um, but you can also get it from Amazon, especially if you're outside the US, you kind of have to get it from Amazon. It costs too much for me to ship it. But that book, Easy Guitar, Chord and Lead Tricks, uh, 
someone who works at Hal Leonard Publications uh, knew me from YouTube. I mean, they saw my videos on YouTube and they had the, the decency to reach out to me and say, hey, um, would you consider writing a book for Hal Leonard? Heck yeah, because Hal Leonard owes me, they owe me for the thousands of dollars I've spent on Hal Leonard books and, and it's nice to get a little bit of that back. So he passed me on to his, um, his coworker and um, Hal Leonard kind of gave me free reign to write something. So I wrote that book about uh, we had <laughs> the very sexy title, Easy Guitar, Chord and Lead Tricks. It, it, it's accurate. It's accurate, and um, and it's hey, it's, it's been a couple of years. It's still in print, um, so let's keep in print. Anyways, uh, that is available from me through the website called www.song-bike.com, and then all the other books you see over there, even though those look like real books made out of paper, um, those are demonstration copies. Those are available only as e-books. Um, so you buy it, download it, and then you print out the whole thing or certain pages. <clears throat> um, and some of you have those books already. I appreciate that. Uh, it just made my life a lot easier to make them available only as digital copies without having to print them out myself and then stare at boxes, hoping that people buy them. So uh, at the moment and for the foreseeable future, those are going to be just available as, as um, digital copies. But look on the bright side, you can get it instantly. <laughs> and um, it keeps the price down. Uh, they're 10 or 20 bucks, depending on which one you get. Um, so I could go on and on about those books, but I want to see your questions for Jeff says, I'm a positive guy. Yeah, I try. Thanks. Thanks, man. I try. Um, you know, I get road rage. I shouldn't say that because now something's going to happen on the way home and people are like, he just talked about his road rage on uh, on YouTube. And clearly, you know, um, I don't know. Some people don't. Some people drive around with their high beams on. I don't know. I'm less positive. <laughs> I'm less positive. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Young, uh, using guitar to get feeling back in your left hand after spinal surgery. Yeah, man. If there's one thing that has been a big eye opener for me since getting to know you folks out there, how many of you are, are, are working through different physical ailments? And just, just know that that's super inspiring to me and that, um, that uh, keep doing it, keep doing it do what you can. Um, if you can't do one particular skill, move on to something else. Uh, but just know that there are many, many, many people who are pursuing the guitar um, who have challenges. And, um, and for sure, hearing from all you folks who do have certain, certain physical challenges, uh, it makes me super grateful that at the moment, knock on, knock on uh, wood, um, you know, I got 10 fingers that work okay. And, you know, yeah, appreciate, I, I appreciate hearing from you folks. Um, okay. Boom, 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 boom. I, I'm looking back. I'm hoping that I'm not missing any questions. You guys, it's, uh, I, I'm happy to keep this going. I figure two hours is plenty, right? Um, if I haven't said anything worthwhile in two hours, man, I, you know, um, so we got about 30 minutes left. If that's okay with you guys, it works for me. Uh, reminder that everything, here is going to be available uh, to watch on YouTube at a later date. I don't, I don't know if the chat comments show up on the YouTube feed. I don't think they do. I mean, when you watch it, you know, when somebody watches it a week from now, I don't think they do. We'll find out. I should know that, um, but we should find out. Okay. Uh, um, Okay, guitars and deserts. Best move or movie to practice the move up the neck, learn notes in the fretboard. Best movie, guitars and deserts, to practice to move up the neck, learn notes in the fretboard. You mean best movie, best video? Um, moving up the neck, learn notes in the fretboard. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll begin answering your question, uh, guitars and deserts, but feel free to, best move, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, best move to practice moving up the neck, <clears throat> okay, so so I like this a lot. I, I, to me, this looks like a two-part question. Um, and in the in the most general sense, there's nothing more satisfying than being that person who can do stuff up the neck, right? There's stuff that's as satisfying, but you know we all want to be that person who can comfortably 
go up and down the neck. It's like really knowing a language as opposed to knowing the, the minimum amount of language, right? Um, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to say a couple of things, but I'm gonna do my best to directly request your question, address your question. Okay, uh, planning up the neck. For those of you who are like I was, pretty much rooted down here and don't have ideas and maybe don't even have inspiration to go up here because you're challenged enough down here. One thing that should give you heart, everything that happens up the neck is something that was originally learned down here and then literally gets transported up the neck, you know? Um, not only is that reality, but it's it's the best way to play things up the neck. And I have a favorite example, as you can imagine. Um, here's my D chord, right? Go to happy D, right? Okay, name this tune. Um, it's gonna be based on the D grip, but the name is not gonna be D because musically it's not a D chord. I know it looks like a D chord, right? But remember, it's, it's the D grip. As soon as you slide up, it's not, the listener is not hearing a D chord anymore. Okay, name this tune. You know it. Wait for it. Okay. So see if you can name that tune. What what's my point? There's an example of famous guitar player, one of my favorites, uh, taking something that we all know and love and making a cool guitar riff out of it just by playing it up the neck. So again, all that stuff you see up and down, I don't care what it is, flashy guitar solos, chord related stuff, whatever, it's something that was almost certainly learned or could be learned down here and then moved up the neck. This is not a different instrument up here, right? It's not a foreign country, it just feels that way, you know? Okay, so I wanted to get that, get that out there. Um, anybody, nobody, nobody knows what song it was? Come on, you know what song that was. Um, it was one part of that song. Uh, okay, I want to get back to where your question. Okay, so guitars and deserts. Best move to practice moving up the neck. Um, and then you say learn notes on fretboard. Again, let's, let's address both of those things. In terms of learning the notes up the neck, some of you might not even know the names of the notes down here. Uh, I'm, of, I'm of two minds when it comes to learning the names of notes. Number one, of course, you want to know everything, everything about everything. You want to know the name of, of that note right there. You want to know everything. I mean, you should, you should, it's your instrument. You should know everything, everything. So that's number one. Number two, you can make great, satisfying, beautiful music without that knowledge. And you, you, we all fall somewhere along the spectrum there, right? People are like, dude, I want to play lullabies for my kids when they go to bed. You know, I, I don't. It's okay to not know this stuff, 100%, I agree. If you were a young person, 12, 10, <laughs> you know, 14, if, if you're a youngish person pursuing the guitar, I personally would not let you play, put limits on yourself like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I say, no, man, you gotta, you gotta learn the names and notes, you gotta learn to read music because you're so young, you don't have no idea what the future will bring. If you're 42 and you want to sing your little girl to sleep, that's a, that is one of the best reasons to play the guitar. And it's totally okay to do that thing and that thing only. Awesome. Therefore, all the notes of the neck are not crucial. So getting back to the comment, playing up the neck is learning the names of the notes, the key to playing up the neck. No, not directly. Not directly. Um, is it a good thing to know how to do? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, so again, I'm of two minds, and I'm going to say things in a, in a moment here that you're going to you're going to say to yourself, "Well, wait, you're saying you know two different things." Okay. Um, are you pursuing a certain famous song? Oh, did anyone guess the name of this song? Come on, people, what song? Oh, but they, all right, Tim, I see Tim, Charlie knew it was, uh, okay, Charlie, Steven, you guys, you guys knew it was, it was something from, uh, from uh, Led Zeppelin, Over the Hills and Far Away. Um, so real quick, here's big famous Jimmy Page, who I respect, terrific guitar player, using a, a, a tool, using an ingredient to his guitar playing, that is not a difficult thing. And one reason I like Jimmy Page um, is sometimes, he, his guitar playing, and he's not the only guy, but he just comes to mind. Um, sometimes his guitar playing uses stuff like that we all can relate to, 
you know, he's not re literally reinventing how to play the guitar exactly. I mean, he did some pretty cool stuff. But my point is, here's Jimmy Page just grabbing a D chord but moving up the neck, you know. Um, and I can do that. You can do that. Like, oh, that's cool. It's like, yeah, why not? It's like a, a, a baker using eggs and flour and sugar and stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. They make something amazing because they have they have a certain skill, but it's eggs and flour. Okay, you get the idea. Um, so real quick, I want to move on, but um, guitars and deserts, where'd you go there? Guitars and deserts. Uh, if you're learning to play a specific song that requires you to go up the neck and you find the tab on, on uh, ultimateguitar.com or whatever, well then, yeah, you follow along with a tab, which is such a beautiful thing. How would we live without tab, right? And then you do whatever it is. And if you don't know the name of it, that's not a catastrophic failure because you can still, you can still play the tune, you know, um, and that's great. Uh, so in terms of, of a, a move to practice, like something you can practice that will help you get up the neck. <clears throat> um, in a general sense, you can take something you already know and slide it up. Uh, um, eight Days a Week by the Beatles, which I have to admit is not literally, this is not literally how they do it, but it just works so well. A D chord, and then you suspend it with your pinky. Up two frets, up three frets, and then back to D. It sounds right. It just they, they, that's not the exact way the Beatles do it. But um, so moves to get you up the neck. That's one thing. You know, um, I love uh, another. And again, I'm I'm a chord rhythm guitar. That's my my default thing. We'll talk about lead guitar in a second. Instead of doing A with three fingers, I'm doing it with one finger. I know it creates a problem with the skinny string because we do not want, ideally the skinny string is open. Personally, I can't arch my finger in a way that allows the skinny string to be open if I do A like this. So I'm just not gonna, I'm gonna make sure I don't pluck this skinny, the skinny E string. One way you can, another move that will get you up the neck is a one finger major chord. Seven nine nine seven, kind of like a uh, cocaine. Uh, now, some of you think, Oh, cocaine, that Eric Clapton song, but some of you smarty smarts, no, that's not an Eric Clapton song. He just made a trillion dollars for the guy who wrote that song. So, okay, who knows? I look at the comments now. Who knows who really wrote the song? Cocaine, absolutely one of my favorite guitar players are because guitar players, song, I like everything about this guy. Best thing to ever come out of Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma. Although, did Leon Russell, was he from Oklahoma too? I, I'm kind of new to Leon Russell. I'm, I'm catching up on my Leon Russell uh, knowledge. Excellent. Okay, you have JJ Kale, man. I don't know. I, I can, I, I could be convinced that JJ Kale is the most underrated guitar player. I, I, yeah. Anyway, so J.J. Kale wrote Cocaine, and oh, for extra credit, what other song did he write that Eric Clapton recorded, and his version is so much better than Eric Clapton's, oh my God. Well, it's, it's profoundly different. Um, but what other song did Eric Clapton cover from J.J. Kale? And as soon as I'm done here, you should go on any music streaming source and listen to J.J. Kale's original version of the song, because it's just too cool. August, you got it after midnight. I mean, Eric Clapton rocks it. It's a party tune. I get it. I get it. Just should somebody show me someone who's cooler than J.J. Kale. There's people who are equally cool. I mean, all right, I don't want to start a fist fight, but but J.J. Kale, come on, man. And his guitar style is so sweet. So his, J.J. Kale's, nobody asked me for my favorite guitar solo. I get that. J.J. Kale's guitar solo in After Midnight I don't know. It's so cool. It's it's. I don't have the words. I don't have the words. And and, and some of you are going to listen to me like, 
sounds kind of, he's not doing anything flashy, you know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Less is more. There's an example of less is more. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I'm done. Um, guitars in deserts, to finish our thought, a one finger A chord up and down the neck. That's a way to get up and down the neck. Um, lastly, a minor pentatonic scale. And the example I'm going to use, I'm going to illustrate it based on the fifth fret um, because that seems how a lot of us teach it, a lot of us learn it. Minor pentatonic scale, A minor pent pentatonic. I know a lot of you, you can play along with me because a lot of you know this already. That's okay. Uh, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. The most useful scale you will ever learn if you are pursuing popular music in general, not jazz, not, you know, but you know, you know the minor pentatonic scale. Let's just call it the pentatonic scale. Um, I don't want to open a big can of worms. Memorize that scale, practice that scale, and then move the whole scale up and down the neck. Um, at a minimum, if nothing else, you'll get great exercise and you'll get that satisfaction of playing something up and down the neck. I joke, but it's true. You paid for the whole guitar, you might as well use it, right? You might as well use it. Um, okay, moving on. Um, I see a lot of people saying some great things. People talking about Glenn Campbell, Lou Reed, Ry Cooter. They're, they're, <laughs> they're three very, very different uh, different approaches to playing the guitar. It's a beautiful thing, right? And there's room for everybody. Um, uh, people ask me what kind of music I like, um, <clears throat> who my favorite guitar player is. And I don't, uh, I, it's a great question. It's a great question. It, it's, you know, it's like, it's what we talk about, right? What's your favorite guitar? I mean, if you could have any guitar in the world, we, we love talking about this stuff because it's, it's engaging. It's a way to get to know someone. Um, so I, I told you, I like, you know, JJ Kale, man. It's a good taste, man. It's just such great taste. Uh, I tend to like people who aren't particularly flashy. Um, so uh, Keith Richards, I think Keith Richards, because he's a songwriter, JJ Kale. These are folks who aren't just up there waiting for their moment in the spotlight. They're like, you know, they're, they're creating creating music um, in a certain, in their own style. Um, so I think Keith Richards is great, you know, I think he's hilarious. Uh, um, I could tell you famous guitar players that you've heard, Ry Cooter, man, you know, um, and I'm also happy to talk about guitar people who aren't household names, but like, whew, um, youngish person, Julian Lodge, L-A-G-E, Julian Lodge, holy cow, you know, <laughs> holy cow. Um, but but there's no lack of great guitar players. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I like people who, who are doing something that catches my eye. Um, uh, so Jake Fussell, F-U-S-S-E-L-L, -L, Jake Fussell, Jake Xerces Fussell, um, plays folk stuff, folky kind of stuff on a Telecaster solo, you know? So he caught my attention, like, wait a minute, I love Telecasters. And to see a guy playing what I would consider an acoustic guitar folk style on a Telecaster and then doing cool things as like instrumentals and um, I, I love that. I love when stuff like that happens and it catches my eye. Um, so yeah, there's there's no lack of people out there and I don't want to bombard you with names. Um, and a lot of these people you guys know already, but uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting tons of people, but I like putting some things out there that maybe you guys haven't heard of. Um, here's a name you won't forget, Moonlight Benjamin. Moonlight Benjamin spelled just like it sounds. Moonlight Benjamin is a young woman from Haiti who rocks, she'll kick your butt. Make sure you're sitting down. Um, if you're in a car, pull over before you put her music on. Holy cow, what the heck? Moonlight Benjamin. Um, you know, th there's there's so much talent out there. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Young people, there's so many talented young people, you know, um, yeah. Uh, hey, Steve Winwood. Um, uh, Bikram, you mentioned Steve Winwood. I, you know what? I, 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 uh, I know the name, and I know uh, his most famous songs. I don't know much about his um, guitar style, so I'm going to defer to you guys. I'm sure he's a perfectly talented guy. I just, I haven't gone to school on him. I haven't come. So Dave Van Rock, yeah, Dave Van Rock, very, you know, in, some of these people, you know, we're we're talking about art, 
right? We're in the world of art right now. And in art, we there are characters. And Dave Van Rock's a character. J.J. Kale is a character. Ry Cooter, I would get a magazine from the newsstand, a magazine from the you know magazine store, have an interview with Ry Cooter. Man, what the, the way he would speak about music made me want to just close the magazine and go practice for six hours. You know, so inspiring. There's a lot of characters out there. Um, uh, Roy Buchanan. Woo! Roy Buchanan. <laughs> oh, I've been wanting to tell someone this. I'm going to tell you guys. Okay, Roy Buchanan. Many of you know who he is. If you don't know who he is, Roy Buchanan, um, one, of, one of the best guitar players you've never heard of, you know. Um, you can read a biography about Roy Buchanan, read interviews <clears throat> online. But here's my point. Uh, Roy Buchanan uh, died um, before his time. And his last gig was at a local town fair in Guilford, Connecticut. And I drive by the fairgrounds in Guilford, Connecticut a couple times a month. And, um, you know, I don't know what the right word is, humbling, moving. Um, but just to know that's where Roy Buchanan played his last gig. I want to tell someone. So I'm telling all of you guys how many people, 70, you got 70 people out there. So I'm telling you 70 people that, um, you know, you never know what's in your backyard, you know. And uh, and so it's I, I drive by the Guilford Town Fairgrounds. I look around. I think nobody here knows this. But, man, this is where Roy Buchanan played his last live gig. I don't know. I, I almost wish there was like a little plaque. Maybe I'll make one. Maybe I'll make a little plaque and put it on a big rock and just stick into the ground not a bad idea i should do like a a, a go fund me that's not a crazy idea okay somebody do some homework for me look into how much it costs to have a plaque put in a rock and uh how much to ship it to to, to me <laughs> and uh i don't know it'd be kind of cool imagine walking through a place and be like what there's a rock roy buchanan's last gig holy cow okay um uh, our skies today. You're saying, have I heard of Ta Taj Ferrant? I haven't from Australia. Very cool. So I see a lot of names here. Nice, man. Um, uh, James Cotton. Now, James Cotton is harmonica, right? Um, but I, I'm sure that James Cotton um, always had a fantastic guitar player with him, you know. Uh, uh, Jeff 12 says, J.J. Kale played the least number of notes he had to play. Yeah, yeah, that's one way to put it. Um, so Charlie Beagle, I see you mentioned a lot of people. Barbecue Bob. Bob, now there's a name. Holy cow. Bar I, didn't, I didn't know that was a, a name that would pop up today. Barbecue Bob. Okay. Uh, Diraj Moray. Nice to see you. I've learned a lot from your channel. I appreciate that. I really do. Um, da -da -da. J.J. Kale is on YouTube, Paul says. He's on YouTube with his homemade guitar from the early 70s. Interesting. I, I didn't know that that he he was one of the, the many guitar players who built their own guitar. Like, well, see, who else was famous for essentially building either from scratch or, you know, see, I, I'm curious who knows. There's a couple of guys that come immediately to mind who not only made their own guitar, but like, that's what they got famous playing, you know, it's not what they play when they were, you know, 11 and then they stopped like, you know, so see, I, I, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Brian May, Brian May comes to mind. And I'm thinking of another guy too, who, <clears throat> who did it. Brian May, what an interesting dude. Did, uh, oh, did Bo Diddley? Well, I guess, oh yeah, the Frankenstrat. So, so who, but who made the Frankenstrat's Frankenstrat guitar genome? Um, you know who it was, right? Uh, Brian May, didn't he get a PhD in astrophysics? Am I crazy? I, I'm not the kind of thing I would make up. And Brian May, didn't he also write a massive history of like one town in England? Woo! I mean, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but it's not the kind of thing I would make up. Um, Eddie Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen essentially made his own guitar. And I'm not an Eddie Van Halen expert, but when I think about people who made their own instrument and then took it to the big time, um, yeah. Uh, yes, Dr. Brian May, excuse me, Dr. Brian May and Eddie Van Halen. Those are the two guys that come to mind. Yeah. Um, uh, Roy Buchanan, Rick Harvey says, Roy Buchanan's version of Hey Joe is legendary. Yeah. Yeah. Roy, Roy Buchanan. Hey, if there's one 
um, I encourage you guys to, to scroll through these comments and check out any of these guitar players. I know I'm going to check out some of the ones that I haven't heard of. Um, you never know when you're going to come across someone who's going to inspire you, uh, teach you. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, you're not, you don't have to connect with everybody. There are famous, famous guitar players. I don't, I, I don't connect with them. Um, they don't speak to my condition. Uh, there was a, I think he was an, a famous editor of the New Yorker magazine or the New York Times. And uh, he was famous for, for his famous quote was, that doesn't speak to my condition, which is a polite way of saying, you know, no, no I, I don't dig it, <laughs> but um, I prefer to say that, you know, it doesn't speak to my condition. Um, but I want to check out some of these people. Charlie says, Buzzy Linhart. Uh, I never heard of Buzzy Linhart, right? Yeah. Um, here's one thing I found as I have met different guitar players, most of whom are not famous. Um, I met B.B. King once. Oh, B.B. King, I should I should tell you, B.B. Um, King, uh, I went to B.B. King gig and he he asked me to sit in. Yeah, he asked me to sit in the other room. You are welcome to, to steal that joke from me. <laughs> I don't know where I got it. Um, but yeah, I met B.B. King. But here's my point. Uh, he was doing a book signing. So I was like number 72 in the line. I met B.B. King, you know. Uh, in terms of having a good attitude, uh, not taking yourself too seriously, I've met a number of talented people who are still learning. They're still, and, and they're not, they have no shame. They'll ask someone else, how did you just do that? Such a healthy attitude. So for me as a young guy to observe that, you know, um, coolest thing. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. But um, whether it's a famous person and you read an interview with that famous person, they say, oh, you know, you know, this this is my inspiration, or this is, I hope I can be as good as that guy, or even just someone who's local in your area, and and they, they don't have any attitude. Or, and if they do have any attitude, it's like, man, you know, I, I, wish, I wish I were better. Um, the flip side of that is, for those of you who wish you were better at your instrument, it never ends. You, you'll get to where you want to go, but by that time, you'll have your set sights set a little bit higher. Um, you know, it's, we're human, we're human. Every once in a while, it's good to write down a specific goal. So when you do get to that goal, you remember, hey, 2023, that was my goal, I did it. Because part of you is gonna be thinking, ah, you know, I wanna get better than that. Okay. Uh, Steve Morse, uh, MRAM63 says still more, Steve Morse says he still practices hours a day. Yeah, um, I lived in Chicago for a long time. And uh, when the Chicago Bulls basketball team was at their, um, heyday, you know, maybe they still are. Sorry, Chicago, I don't know, I don't know. But Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Luke Longley, I remember Luke Longley hurt himself doing doing uh, uh, body surfing. He had to miss some games, like, come on, Luke Longley. Okay, uh, I digress. We, we would hear lots about Michael Jordan's life in general because he's Michael Jordan, right? You live in Chicago. And I remember hearing about Michael Jordan's training regimen. He would train with uh, Scottie Pippen and there's another guy in the Bulls who had trained with them. Anyways, they, Scotty Pippen said Michael Jordan's training routine was outrageous. It was insane. You know, what does that tell you? You know, we, we all have a certain amount of skills. You know, most of us have pretty average skills, including myself, you know, but you work at it, you work at it. And, and even the people with what would seem to be, you know, God given talent. Those are the people who work even harder than the rest of us, you know? That's what it seems like. So, yeah, you know, be, be patient to yourself, with, with yourself, and, and don't beat yourself up too much. And just, you know, get inspiration where you can, including um, including people who, uh, I see these Chicago Bulls. No, um, I, I see these suggestions. It wasn't it wasn't one of these guys. He was a player. Okay, don't, don't get mad at me. He wasn't a Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. He was like the next not Steve Kerr, African-American. Did he wear goggles sometime? Not Dennis Rodman. It was one of those guys who's not a household name. You have to be a Bulls fan. But he would train with Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. And, no, not Horace Grant. And real quick, I didn't know I'd be talking about the Chicago Bulls today. Uh, 
And I thought, dude, that guy is stepping up and training with Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. I that that's my guy. That's like I, I admire him. I don't think it was Horace Grant. I, I don't think so. But okay, I, I don't let's not get hung up on it. Okay. Uh Mm -hmm. Look at the comments. Look at the comments. Um, okay, C6 Steve. I, I see that name around. Mark, you mentioned C6 Steve. I see that name around. Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, it's about five to the hour where I am. This has been so much fun. Let's do this again. All right. Let's do this again. Uh, real quick before I say an official goodbye. Number one, thank you for being here. So much fun. I'm talking about my job. Who doesn't want to talk? Um, some of you might want to just complain about your job. <laughs> and I get that. Um, uh, what I want to say is, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, you know, um, if you are so inclined. Uh, I did set up a Patreon page um, and to access it, you go to Patreon and the, it's, the name of the page is Song, Bike, Guitar Lessons. Um, you can see different levels and stuff. And like I said earlier, I'm going to I put in some basic benefits at each level and I'm going to go back in there and tweak that a little bit. Um, but um, if you're so inclined, I appreciate you, uh, you supporting me uh, via Patreon. Um, different books behind me. These books are available. Almost all of them are electronic books. I can't emphasize this enough. Every once in a while, someone will say, hey man, I bought your book. It's been a month. It hasn't arrived. Like, it's an electronic book. It arrived very quickly and, and somehow you missed the fact that it's an electronic book. <clears throat> um, the merchandise, the, the different ebooks there are available through my website called www.song-bike.com. You do not have to be a member to buy the books. If you choose to be a member, I appreciate it. And then you get access to the videos that are on the site. You get access to the PDFs that I've been posting. Um, and I look forward to doing more with that website in the future. Uh, if you would like that book, the Hal Leonard book right there, Easy Guitar, Chord, and Lead Tricks, I have a box full of them. And uh, when those run out, I just go to Hal Leonard and they send me more. I mean, I buy them, but uh, uh, that's my relationship with Hal Leonard. Technically, they own the book, right? They, they bought it from me. And um, when you guys uh, buy it from me, I make a few bucks. You can get it from Amazon. Those of you who are overseas, in case you missed this earlier, the electronic books are available from, you know, all over the world. That book is available via Amazon, but um, I prefer if you buy it from me, I appreciate that, unless you live outside the, the US, in which case, yeah, you gotta get it online because it just costs too much. Um, $15 book, it could easily be another 15 just to ship it to the UK or whatever, right? that's, that's reality. But, but get the book, it's a cool book. I like it a lot, uh, a lot of good stuff in there. Um, okay, so everybody, uh, I'm going to say, our guys today says, thank you. I appreciate that. Our guys, Mark, come visit London, England. Mark, dude, you know, uh, <laughs> I got to get out more, you know. And my accountant made it clear that I can write off <laughs> travel if I'm, you know, if I'm doing my job, I'm traveling for business. So I just have to work out how I can, like, do a world tour <laughs> or even just go to the UK um, or Australia or whatever and, uh, and somehow magically write it off. So, hey, uh, before I forget, stay in touch. You are welcome to email me. Uh, that's a good way to get a hold of me. Info at corner-music.com. Info at corner-music.com. Oh, actually, that's the corner music one. There's the song bike. Hold on. At info. Bear with me, folks. You think I would know these things? Info at snow. Jeez, this is not a good time to, like, think. What's the thing? Uh well, let's stick with that for the moment. Info at corner-music.com. That'll get to me. I think we can do info at song-bike.com. That's probably, that's probably a smarter a smarter thing to do. Info at song-bike.com. Um, for sure, despite my brain freeze, contact songbike at gmail.com. Why would you want to email me? Because you have a great idea for a video that I have not done. That's a, I would welcome that, you know. Every once in a while, I run out of an idea and I have to, drink another cup of coffee and get an idea. So um, here's what I'm especially interested in. Suggestions for videos that are not specific songs, even though I get it, we all wanna play specific songs. But uh, like I did some up the neck chord videos recently, conceptual stuff like that. I would love suggestions for that kind of stuff. 
<clears throat> um, just make sure if you're making a suggestion that I haven't already done it. I've made 500 something videos and I forget which ones I've already done. So here's how you can find out if I've already done the video, whether it's a song or whatever. Go to YouTube, search for uh, J-K-E-H-W-1. That's J K E H W one. That's my last name, Kehu. J K E H W, the number one. And then the name of whatever it is, you know, uh, After Midnight um, or uh, JQ1 bar chords or something, you know, because um, maybe I've already done the video. But I'm, email me your suggestions for videos. I'd, I'd love it. Uh, okay. So I probably should <laughs> wrap up. This is fun. I'm having fun, you know. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Da -da -da -da. Kept my attention. Okay. Thanks. This kept your attention. Time well spent. When do you plan on doing your next show? Excellent. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for asking. Um, maybe next Saturday. I had a student at this time slot. Um, and then recently he moved. I thought, well, wait a minute. Saturday afternoon, you know, for me, it's Saturday. Right now it's uh, seven o'clock here in, in uh, the great state of Connecticut. Um, so, so tentatively, maybe we'll do this on a regular basis on Saturdays. I'm not prepared to commit to every Saturday yet. Although part of me is like, why not, man? Get a coffee and some cookies and I'm good to go. Uh, okay. So, the, um, Chris, uh, sorry, Charlie asks, is Old Saybrook, uh, that's a town I'm in right now, is it off of I-95? Yeah, yeah. Um, exit 67 or 66. Um, yeah. Uh, small town, but when you're that close to a major, major interstate highway, it's pretty easy to find us. Um, I have a little music shop. Uh, we used to do retail and lessons, and then just made more sense just to do lessons. I'll tell you the whole story next time. Uh, okay. Um, anybody, did anybody, is there any question that I have missed? Because now is the time and I apologize. <clears throat> hey, Scott, thanks for uh, getting the Cord and Lead Tricks book. I appreciate that. Um, uh, my wife says, you did great, sweetie. Uh, I'm speechless. Um, Matt Guitar Murphy, Jeff uh, 12 met Matt Guitar Murphy. Yeah, from the, from the Blues Brothers, you know. Um, hey, I see a super chat. Holy cow. See, th those of you who uh, participated in the super chat program, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Um, it's uh, my son's going to college. Well, he's going to college before you donated the money. <laughs> but now he's definitely going to college. <laughs> so I'm very proud of him. He's a good boy. Uh, he's a smart boy. And, uh, and you know, someone's got to pay for college. Someone's got to pay for it. So looks like mom and dad are paying for college. Uh, so I appreciate um, all, all your support, you guys. I really do appreciate that. Um, okay. So I'm um, a uh, C wife. Thank you for your super chat. I really appreciate that. And I know you weren't the only person to, uh, to make a super chat, but I, uh, I really appreciate that. I'm figuring this out, you guys. Um, I'm figuring out how this whole how this whole thing works. Okay. Um, hey, our skies today it says, can you teach on StreamYard? I don't know what that is. I don't know. Um, send me an email and tell me all about StreamYard. Um, contact songbike at gmail.com. Uh, North Country Fisher, midnight where you are. Yeah. Nice, man. Nice. How, how's midnight? Is midnight going okay? Is it good? Uh, Charlie says, did my son get a guitar scholarship? My son uh, was a tuba player, um, <laughs> and but did not did not choose to pursue tuba at the collegiate level. So no uh, no uh, tuba scholarship for, for my, my son. Uh, uh, Rakesh says, please repeat how to get the easy chords book from you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. The way to get the book right back there, the, my only hard copy book, go to my website, www. Song dash bike S O N G hyphen bike like a bicycle B I K E dot com and everything's right there, um, including how to get a hold of me. So, in case my email address doesn't make sense, you can just go through the website. You know, <clears throat> our skies today, our e your email is let's I have multiple emails, <laughs> but let's go with contact song bike at gmail.com. Thanks for asking. Okay. Uh, 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 um, our skies today says, Jonathan, you should 
you need to set up a membership, um, like a YouTube membership. Yeah, yeah. I just want to play the guitar all day, man. I want to play the guitar all day and then uh, and teach people the guitar to uh, to pay the bills. And then along comes the internet, and along comes YouTube, and all you nice people, and I have to you know learn new skills, and that's cool. It's it's it blows my mind that that this is even a job. Um, but uh, yeah, so I should learn about YouTube membership. I, I, uh, okay, everybody, everybody, everybody. Okay, I think it's time to wrap up, man, because I don't stop now. Um, <laughs> uh, would you consider um, Planet Mula says, would you consider Kurt Cobain a great guitarist? Um, I, well, number one, I haven't studied his style. So, <clears throat> um, but I know there are famous songs, you know, uh, on a technical level, no, he's not a great guitarist. I don't think he would say say he is a great guitarist either. Um, but you know, he he did some really appealing stuff on the guitar that captured a certain moment in time. And if if I know how to do that, I'd be doing that right now. You know, so Kurt Cobain is a, he's a success. Put it that way, he's a success. And you know. Um, and it's sad that you know his life ended the way it did. I, I missed the boat on Kurt Cobain. I was a little bit, you know, I, I the, the Nirvana didn't didn't grab me as a band. I was just a little bit, you know, I don't want to say too old, but you know, I love the replacements. Anybody love the replacements out there? I love the replacements so much. And you know, bands like the replacements, the Del Fuegos from Boston. There's so many great, great bands. That, that I, I like for that style, that like raw rock and roll, just, mm, you know, great style. Uh, that when Nirvana came along, I was like, they, they didn't, I already had that, I had that. And so they, they didn't speak to my condition. But in hindsight, oh yeah, man, I can see their appeal and like, they, they rocked out, man, the kids love Nirvana. So, um, so I, am I answering your question? Kurt Cobain, you know, man, yeah, the guy rocked, man, he rocked, he, he did his thing. And we all should aspire to do your thing and and whatever in whatever capacity. But um, he's one of a zillion guitar players that I don't look to for inspiration. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a million other people who don't look to for inspiration. And there's a million who I do, you know, but that's not about his skills. I, I Some people, all they want to go. Oh, um, well, they're, like someone mentioned about Steve Morris, there's some people who on a technical level, they want to be so good and, and presumably they want to improve from day to day. And so I take a lot of inspiration from that. Not Steve Morse personally, but like B.B. Mm, King. I, I, I've heard stories about B.B. King. People would see him backstage and he'd have different uh, in method books or in structure books or whatever. And he'd be like learning new stuff. And I, that's, I find that so inspiring, you know. Um, so, uh, so Kurt Cobain, you know, he did his thing and I respect that. And no one's life should end abruptly like that. It's, that's that's too bad, you know. I'll always wonder with all sorts of folks who who died at, at too young. I always wonder what what they what they could have brought to the table because people develop and people change and people you know. So you always wonder. Um, Steve says, "Don't run wild, yeah, man." Oh, so referring to Del Fuego, son. Uh, Warren Zanes has a new book out, right? So you saw my video, Warren Zanes member of the Del Fuegos, wrote a, I, I bet it's a very cool book. I haven't got it yet because I'm hoping to get it right from him directly uh, about the Bruce Springsteen Nebraska album. Um, and Warren Zanes wrote a great book on Tom Petty. And I just, I want to meet Warren Zanes someday, man. I want to hang out with him. Um, so, so yeah, member of the Del Fuegos who went on to, to be a professor in New York and writing great rock and roll books. Uh, okay. Um, Yes, can I put up the email address? You know what? About time for me to type something here. So, like, uh, okay, folks, here's a good way to get a hold of me. Contact email.com. Okay. <laughs> I have a bunch of addresses. That, that's one of them. Um, okay, anybody, I think we've got to wrap up, man. I know, I know you guys um, have, have, you know, it's, hey, it's Saturday night somewhere, right? <laughs> um, except North County Fisher, it's past your bedtime there. Okay. Um, hey, uh, 
I, I see some, uh, Rick, thank you for your uh, your super chat there. And um, I appreciate everyone who threw some bucks my way. Um, it's going to a good cause. I really appreciate that. Um, I wouldn't do this if I didn't get such great feedback from you guys. Uh, real quick, the whole only reason I'm even on YouTube to begin with, <clears throat> I have a little origin story. One of my students said, hey, can I, can I film you playing today's lesson um, so that when I go home, I can remember what you did, you know, which like, yeah, sure. You always don't, all your students do this? I said, no, actually they don't. He said, I don't know why they don't because then I can go home, I can watch you do it over and over again. That's a good idea. He said, tell you what, I'm gonna make you a YouTube channel and I'll, I'll post, every time I do a little video, I'll post it on the YouTube channel. We'll make it private. But then the next student who wants to learn that song, uh, you can just direct them to the YouTube. And I'm like, fine. You know, didn't, I was busy teaching all the time and I, I wasn't, so, uh, my wife and I are talking about ideas. I said, how about if we film some TV shows for the local public access TV station? You know, the channel that no one watches because it's so, it's not always fascinating entertainment, right? I thought I'm gonna film some videos for the local public access TV and it costs nothing but my time. And maybe I'll get a few new students out of it, that's fine. So we filmed these uh, videos. Uh, and they air on local TV and a couple of friends and neighbors say, hey, I saw you on channel 19 last night or whatever. And that's cool, you know. And when they finish airing these 13 episodes, uh, the guy who monitored this, he didn't do anything, but he monitored, he made the equipment available to us. Um, he said, hey, here's the DVDs. You film these videos, obviously, but they are your videos. We do not take any responsibility for them. They're your DVDs, you know, get them out of here, okay? So I said to my wife, well, I don't know what to do with these. I'm not gonna, what do we do? So I'll put them on YouTube, you know? I don't know how to do that. I'll put them on YouTube and I don't know, you know? So fast forward like a week and suddenly one video has 10 views. Like I said to my wife, did, did you watch this 10 times? No, my mom watched it like once. Oh, another week goes by, it has 30 views and like a thumbs up. I'm like, sweet, someone gave me a thumbs up. Okay, well, you know the rest, right? Like all of a sudden, like people are watching these videos little by little. And uh, I thought, well, I better make some more videos. I don't even have a video camera because I we filmed these at a, at a studio. Okay, so the rest is history. But I'm kind of, I fell into YouTube like right off the turnip truck. I fell in like, oh, okay, I guess this is a job. I guess this is a thing. Um, I could tell you a variety of mistakes I made that kept me from being remotely successful on YouTube. Um, and uh, it's not something I, I, uh, I went to school for, studied up on, learned the hard way. Um, anyways, so I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you hanging out today, but I appreciate your support um, uh, as I do this crazy stuff. Okay, I got to stop talking. All right, it's dinner time around here. Um, thank you for your super chats. Um, uh, Al, thanks for saying, Al says, glad you put them on YouTube. Not everyone can get in-person lessons, even though I live in Connecticut. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. Bobby Jones says, great stream. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, I see some thumbs up. Hey, Rick Harvey mentions the John Butcher Axis. I remember the John Butcher Axis. I, I grew up outside of Boston, <clears throat> the burbs. Okay, our skies today. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for watching. Uh, MRAM63, took your daughter to see Dream Theater in Kansas. Yeah, yeah, you know, take your kids to a show, see what happens. Um, you never know. Uh, our skies is the ventures were cool. Yeah, bad finger. That's a thing, you know, as 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 guitar players, you enter a community and there's so much good music, you know, and so don't get hung up on stuff that you don't like. Move on to something you do like, you know, and we all can have our opinions and we all can take inspiration from various, various parts. Okay, I better say goodbye. Everybody, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, send me your ideas for some videos. Uh, if you email me, I can't promise I'm going to e email you back instantly, but I'm going to read any email you send me. So um, I appreciate that. Um, maybe we'll do this again next week. Watch my uh, social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Those are my two, two big things. Um, either way, uh, search for me under Songbike or Songbike Guitar Lessons. I have my own personal Jonathan YouTube uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, but I would just as soon have you folks follow me under Songbike. So whether it's Facebook or Instagram, um, you can find me as a Songbike um, under that term. I think Instagram it's songbike.guitarlessons and Facebook it's songbike. Something I should know. 
All right. Thanks again for the super chats. Let's call it. Okay. Let's say good night. Good day. Those of you on the West Coast, uh, you know, you guys are just finishing up your lunch or something. <laughs> Not quite. All right, everybody. I appreciate it. I guess I'm just going to click on end stream, right? That's how we end this thing. All right. Thank you. Let's do this again. I hope you all got something. Uh, save your questions for next time. If some of you uh, think of a question five minutes from now that you wish you asked, write it down. You will forget it. Um, so write it down and, uh, and let's do this again. Okay. I better just say goodbye. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you again. Okay. All right. Take care.